my lovely, lovely imps, it is time now. I welcome you all now to the 2023 Demon Mama year in review. What we are going to do now together is a wild and crazy adventure back through time. We're going to talk about 2023. We're going to talk about all the wild stuff that happened this year. We're going to go back through my video archive to the beginning of the year. We're going to look at all the stuff that I made. We're going to laugh about it. We're going to share good clips. I know some of you have, have clips. I know some of you guys have got some wild stuff. We're going to talk about all of that. And then we're going to talk about what my plans for 2024 are and where we're going in 2024. 2023 has been an absolutely wild year for me. And I mean on all fronts, okay? It has been a truly crazy year. I have traveled quite literally all across the country. Um, I have traveled internationally this year. Uh, I actually traveled a lot. I went to California. I drove all the way up and down the West Coast with my friend Xander Hall. Uh, I went to Salt Lake City on a road trip. I drove on an RV trip with my, my with my pack of critters all the way across the United States from the West Coast to the East Coast and back again. And I went to Vancouver this year. So, so, so much all over the place. And that's just what I did off stream. Because on stream, we have gone all over the place this year. We have talked about political issues. We have talked about strange and very, very weird YouTube occurrences. We, this was one of the most, this was easily, not even, I shouldn't even say one of, this was the most successful year for the Drama Mama sub show. Um, as many of you know, I have a series on my channel called Drama Mama. Drama Mama is a show where we try to talk about huge pop culture generally, sometimes YouTube um, dramas that I believe have come, have like raised to a level of seriousness that they need to be discussed uh, uh, without just being sort of forever reaction, uh, off the cuff nonsense. That show this year has been so successful. There has been so much love for the Drama Mama series. There has been so much love for the way that I construct the show. I have been receiving an unbelievable amount of constructive, positive feedback um, on the Drama Mama series. Um, obviously, one of the biggest things that happened this year was the whole Illuminati situation, which is technically still unfolding as we speak. Um, and so we might even get a 2024 Illuminati update because of how, uh, long and bloody that particular conflict has gone. Um, of course the James Somerton one that I just posted, but recorded a couple of days ago has done very, very well. Um, people really received it well and, ex and appreciated the way that I approached it. And of course there was the Miranda Singh situation, which that was a whole other mess. Um, in 2024, I want to continue with Drama Mama being a, a show where we're able to have fun, but where the main goal is to break out of drama cycles and talk about what matters. We've been very successful with that this year. We're going to obviously go over all of the episodes that were posted to the channel. Um, in just a minute, we're going to be going through all of the videos that I posted, looking at them all. And of course... This would be a great time for all of you who are watching this right now to open up my channel page and scroll with me as we go through it. And there's a button you can press that's called watch later. You should put videos that you haven't seen from my channel on your watch later. Because let me tell you, there are some videos from this year that you haven't seen that were incredible. We did the Star Wars arc was this year. Can you believe it? The sky burial for the Twitter left was this year. Do you guys remember the sky burial? That was this year. Hard to believe, right? This year was 
the beer goggles this year was um uh all the the elon musk x meltdown stuff we have oh my god so much happened this year so much I, I was thinking it was ju at just at the end of last year. I don't think so. I believe it was, I think it was February, if I'm not mistaken, because I, if I remember correctly, we'll go to my channel. We'll find out in just a minute when we do this together. Don't play the, no, don't play it. Come on, here we go. Let's find out. Let's go all the way back and then we'll scroll together. Oh man, we had we had the beginning of the signal nights. This was the first year that we started doing signal nights as a specific thing. Oh my god, this was the year that we had the the Michael Knowles as a peasant video. Oh man, we got to go through all these. We have so many to go through. It's actually crazy. Tucker Carlson lost his fucking job this year. Steven Crowder blew up his platform this year. The Mr. Beast drama was this year. Oh my God. All right, let's see here. Let's find out here. So that was last year. Where's the sky burial? Oh, here it is. The death of left-wing Twitter. Here it is. Let's find out when that one was. Boop. February of 21, 2023. That was this year. Oh my God. The retard stream was from this year. Do you guys remember that? We were cooking this year. And by that, I mean I was cooking this year. But you guys were also cooking this year, to be completely honest. We had the, the fundraiser for Lucy this year, for Lucy's mom. That was this year. That was crazy and a massive success. The church militant exploded this year. Kiwi TP with the tier two sub, thank you so very much. And Red Carp 98 with the unbelievably generous $50 donation. I just want to apologize for dredging up painful feelings, especially when this is supposed to be a fun stream. Get yourself something nice. Thank you. You don't have to apologize. You did just fine. Thank you, though. Your support is the world to me. This is a viewer-supported show, so if you're watching right now, consider throwing a few bucks my way, because we always will make this show free to the public. Always has been, always will be. Your support is what keeps us going. So like the stream at the minimum, press that like button, and consider throwing some money our way through Patreon or through my website, demonmama.com. Thank you. Let's do this. Let's go through, okay? Let's go through them, all right? Oh my God. Let's see here. So let's see. The Wait, legacy this... of not... <laughs> Hard Mommy, the first trans Metal Gear Solid villain, predicted the future in 2001. This was from February. So let's see. We have to go all the way back. Um, The monarchist debate. Oh my god, was that Andrew Callahan situation from this year? Was that really from this year? It was. This was from January. Oh my god. Oh shit. I needed to right click. Oh, God damn it. All right, we're going to do this. Hold on a second. Let's get back to the beginning, okay? We're going to start at the beginning and we're going to scroll forward, okay? And if, by the way, I recommend you scroll with me, I will give you a place to start. So if you want to scroll along with me and have a fun time, make this an interactive thing, you know, part of the magic of being on stream is that you can do it with me live. Or I guess... In the future, it won't really be live. It'll be on a video, but it doesn't matter. It'll be similar because I build my show like a live experience so you can do with me live. But if you can't scroll with me, say you're on mobile, if there's a video you hear me talking about and you want to go, Mama, what video is that? Just say that in chat and I'll send you the link to the video. That way you can check it out later. 
because I want you to check out my stuff. It means the world to me when people actually watch my old content. Oh my God. The Minecraft kid debate was from this year. Oh my God, the Minecraft kid debate. Let's see here. AI art debate, that looks like this was this month. That this year? Wait a second, this can't be. We posted that this year, didn't we? No, that was December. Okay, so there we go, we found it. All right, everybody. The first video of the year. Okay, are we ready? LB, thank you so very much. Thank you so very much. LB with the $5 says, I was half expecting this to be a stream where you pretend you're about to cover drama to trick a bunch of people into watching Holy Mac, but this is great. Nah, I don't, I don't love doing fake outs. When I said it was finally time, I mean, it's finally time for us to do the year in review. Sure, it's a little clickbaity, but I don't like doing fake outs that much. Once in a while, once in a great while. Tyranax with the $10, thank you so much. You know they say all true all streams are created equal, but when you look at Demon Mama and you most and you look at most everyone else, you can see that statement is not true. True! Thank you very much, Tyranax. Thank you so much. All right. Let's do this, okay? Right here, okay? This is where we begin, right here. Wait, is this was this really not from this year? Was oh man, wait, the the fundraiser was in December of last year. Okay. So the first video of this year was right here. Why conservatives hate attractive people. That was the first one. So this is where you want to sink to, okay? Scroll all the way back until you see this row. You're going to see based, malicious, and bigot. These are the thumbnails you want to look for, okay, everybody? Sink your scrolls up. Sink up your scrolls and let us begin. So this was the stream in which we talked about... Um, conservatives getting really really mad about uh, a, a a celebrity who was like had fat on her body she's not even fat she just has fat on her body and conservatives were having a complete and a complete and utter meltdown it was pathetic then of course we talked about the youtube uh censorship apocalypse which was when they broke when they cracked down on swearing which they've partially rolled back a year later and YouTube decided to partially crack, uh, partially roll back their swearing policy, but not completely. And to be honest, as we've seen, it is now uh, even easier for my channel to get demonetized. Uh, in this one, we talk about um, Christian moralism and how Christian moralism leaks into even uh, even things as seemingly secular as YouTube. We have the Grover House video. Yeah, that's right. Although, to be fair, the Grover House video was from our backlog. So we actually recorded the Grover House video quite a bit earlier than we released it. This video was actually recorded back in 2022. Ooh, this is a good one. The left is wasting time and losing the war. This was me talking about my anger with lefties for so long that uh, they can literally make money off of any conflict that happens on the internet so long as there is conflict. Um, but it's very self-enriching. No one else benefits from that. And in fact, most of the people involved will suffer. Um, there are obviously conflicts online worth having, okay? But... I think that the way that most social... <laughs> That's where this meme came from? Demon Mama fans explaining why crime is based. <laughs> what a legendary meme. What a legendary meme. <laughs> Good one. Social media spaces operate, tips the scale of these sort of, of this calculation out of our favor, 
uh, serving us up meaningless, endless, by the way, meaningless conflict, which cannot be usefully salvaged for political or intellectual gain. True past me. This is a video in which I discuss um, how uh, Twitter discourse um, completely uh, invalidates the ability to have a meaningful conversation. Um, and this was this was uh, this video was specifically discussing um, the like um, the like do, 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 has the left failed men discourse. Um, which was basically just like this really silly discourse that started um, based off of a total uh, bait shit post um, that was designed to make people fight. And of course they fought and the only person who won anything out of it was twitter.com. And they didn't even win that much because they're so far in debt that they uh, only were able to sell a little bit of ads about it. Um, but yeah, yeah. Anyway, so yeah, there was that one. This year we had a lot of uh, a lot of critiques for the uh, so-called online left. Here is the uh, here is the debate or the uh, the reaction by that Christian YouTuber, the super Christian YouTuber who was really mad at Ethan Klein. Then of course we reacted to uh, we reacted to critical. Oh, this is where that one comes from. The crime is based clip comes from this one, I think. We had the reaction to that dang dad. What a legendary video. Absolutely legendary video. Of course, we had some fantastic Cooking Mama. Cooking Mama fans were eating great this year, weren't they? Damn. Cooking Mama fans were eating good. We got a lot of good Cooking Mama this year. Although I will say that the latter half of the year, um, uh, the latter half of the year, I had less Cooking Mama. Oh, the Cooking Mama fans are insatiable. Oh, they're all mad at me now. The Cooking Mama fans are not happy. Yikes. Well, I'm pissing off the Cooking Mama fan base, but you want to know, you want to know the big secret about the Cooking Mama fan base? They love eating, but they don't like helping with the chores. They like uh, the cooking. They don't like doing the dishes afterwards, okay? Finding Cooking Mama content that isn't just going and making fun of the same three fucking terrible cooks is very, very difficult. I don't even know where to find that shit because there's two types of things. And I've ranted about this before, but I'm going to do it again, okay? There are two types of bad cooks, okay? There are genuinely bad cooks who are completely convinced of their ability to cook um, and they cook terribly and they decide to film themselves doing it because they genuinely believe that they are a good cook, but they aren't. That's the type of cook I want to find. The second type of bad cook is the fucking frauds, okay? This is the uh, the messy fetish people, the people who like, uh, uh, they're like, oops, and then they spill the pudding all over the counter. Like, I just have to clean this up. And it's a poorly disguised fetish video. Um, and then there is, uh, and of course, within this category as well, there are people who just intentionally make disgusting food for the gross out value. And by that, I mean like, um, there's this one channel where they like, they like eat a banana, they'll eat a banana with the, with the like wrapper still on or with the wrapper. Why would I, with the skin still on brain? Um, yeah, we want the first type, but it's easy to find the second type because see on TikTok, people can just make, um, uh, people can just eat, uh, 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 I mean, sorry uh, on TikTok, people can just cook garbage. They can literally pour trash into a cup and then be like, I'm just cooking here. Ha <laughs> ha. And a bunch of children would go like, 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 and I don't care about that. That's not entertaining to me. Anybody can just put the literally empty a garbage can into a pot and call it bad cooking. It's not bad cooking. It's you're making a mess for fun and it's not fun to me. So cooking mama people in 2024, you have a mission. Cooking mama fans, fill up the cooking mama recommendation channel with cooking videos for us to actually watch. And then we'll have a year full of, full of legendary cooking mamas. 
or at least help me find places where I can find examples of bad cooking. I, I need, I need help with that. Okay. I don't know where to find that stuff. So I need people to assist me with that. And then I will make amazing cooking videos out of it. Basically, I'm looking for an ingredient sourcer, okay? I need a grocer. It's very difficult to stumble upon. Like I said, if you search for it intentionally, which I have done, you will find intentionally bad cooking, not entertaining. If you, and it's hard to know where it is. And I know it exists because there's people out there watching it. Where do you submit? The Discord, there is a Cooking Mama content submissions channel. On the Discord, you go to the Discord channel, discord.gg forward slash demon mama, and you will find under Hell's Mailbox, Cooking Mama submissions. And if you give me those submissions, I will put them on the watch list and we will react to them. And that's the goal. But the thing is, the, go the thing is, it either has to be so good of an intentionally bad fake cook that I can't tell, or it's got to be a real bad cook. None of that fake stuff, none of the fetish stuff. I don't want any of that. None of that. And yeah, we do need more good cooking content too. But honestly, that's easy to find. I already know all of the good cooking channels. Anyway. That was a ramble, but that's what we're here for. Let's continue. We have the drama mama on the Dungeons and Dragons situation. That was wild. Oh, the A Cheeto debate. Everybody remember the A Cheeto debate? All right, A Cheeto debate. Legendary. Cheetos in chat right now. Wait, that's really funny. Man, your video sucked, dude. Do you wanna <laughs> do you wanna have a conversation, A Cheeto? <laughs> I forgot that we started with that as the preview. Is Demon Mama not reading YouTube chat anymore? I am, but I've been rambling. I bet there are reddits for cooking, for judging people for bad cooking. That would be where I look. If you've got any, send them to the, send them to the, the Cooking Mama submissions channel. That would be super awesome. That would be amazing. I'm definitely still reading it, but I, I gotta keep up, but I gotta do all this. So let's continue. Hello? Yo, hello. This is a Cheeto, oh, right? It's echoing. Oh shit, you gotta turn off your, uh, gotta turn off the actual. This is the one, is a, there are a lot of cis people in the world. What I'm saying is, is that it's a pretty, pretty esoteric benefit to say, when I go to the store, I can walk to the boy section instead of walking to the section of the underwear that fit my body type uh, section. Like, do you see what I mean? Like, I'm not talking I mean, about the number of people. I see what you're effects. saying. Like, yeah, I'm yeah, saying I'm, that I'm like sure. this was the guy who tried to. This was. Oh man, this argument was so wild. It was such a long argument, but I was really trying to get through to him. This was the guy who brought up like um, women's pants not having pockets, uh, or no, he argued that like women's pants were made that way because of some like biological uh, truth about women. When obviously there's like an unbelievable variety in women's pants. There is no woman, single woman shape. There are just tendencies based mostly on, uh, on social assumptions. The reason why there are skirts in the women's section, uh, is because that's what society says that women wear. Uh, if we were in Scotland, there would be skirts in the men's section because in Scotland, you know, kilts exist. That's a, that's a rough example, but I was talking about how this all, this shit is all social and he just wasn't getting it. He was saying that like, um, that, that like the clothes are, are, are like biologically determined, all of them. And I'm like, no, dude, the reason that we make cuts a certain way is because there are, there are social trends that people try to adhere to that are popular. There's nothing biological about the cut of a pant. Uh, women can walk into a men's section and buy a comfortable pair of pants. Men can walk into a women's section and buy a comfortable shirt, a comfortable pair of pants. It's just, it was a very funny conversation. The Yeah, the women's pockets was a big part of this debate. And and his, his, this debate started because he made like, 
this soy facing reaction video to my neo pronouns video he was very very angry about the neo pronouns video very angry about it yes renophilia says did you know that archaeologists don't actually know for sure the sex of the bones they look at they guess but their socialization can bias them to mess up not just that but they use almost exclusively archaeologists and anthropologists almost exclusively use context clues it's actually not easy at all not even a little bit easy to try and do some sort of biological analysis of bones it's just you can't tell they use context clues they say oh yeah here's something we already know about egyptian society here's this burial chamber it did end on a positive note um it did actually nasty redacted uh but but then he kind of he kind of went back and and just continues to sort of shut it up i don't expect a single debate to change someone's mind forever but i got the feeling that he wasn't really paying that close attention by the end of it yeah still legendarily fun debate if you haven't seen the Cheeto debate go check it out it's called minecraft uh, mama debates minecraft kid a cheeto on gender legitimately a very fun one then we had the kidology reaction which was the kidology attempting to critique critique the left which that's actually a very popular video this video has nineteen thousand views over the course of this year that's pretty damn good that's really incredible um this was a mind melting reaction um, that's also where the clock meme comes from. Let's see if I can find the timestamp where we got wow. the clock. There's a reason that's... I... Yeah, here we go. You can see where this video went. So for my show the... to perpetually be free. Thank you for supporting the show. Also, if you're here and you are still surviving the dementia attack, please press the like button and all... <laughs> hey! Perfect! Perfect timing. I jumped into my own little self-promo. At the very end, we had even more clocks, didn't we? Or was this the maximum? Yeah, this is where we had the clocks going fucking also, wild. make sure that you're subscribed to Demon... True, make now sure you're subscribed! Now she's saying that the left is bad for not considering her a leftist, even though she is explicitly opens this video, and in the description of her video, explicitly states that she will not be and is not a leftist. Is that... Is oh, this Kidology video was deranged. Um, one of the most, like... It was just mind melting. There's a reason why we broke out the dementia clocks for that one. Um, I have since, it's funny, since I watched that video, I have seen other Kidology videos and I have to say it's a consistent thing with Kidology. Um, Kidology just seems to have an approach to making video essays that is highly self-contradictory and seems to forget what was said even moments before. I don't know if she doesn't, like, have anyone reviewing her scripts. Um, she's a talented presenter. Um, we did some of that already, Metroplex, but we're gonna definitely, uh, we're gonna definitely be doing some other, uh, killer, killer clips for sure. Um, the, the, I've seen, like I said, I've seen a couple of other of Kidology's videos, and since, and, and there's just this, there's, there's a very, like, stream of consciousness approach except they're written scripts they're not streams there's no stream of consciousness happening it's a script that's written and like again sometimes the script will con contradict itself within minutes it's very 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 weird the clocks were iconic yeah yes Fortnite says chariot did a recent video on her where she was just blatantly lying about when stuff happened in bread tube to support a bizarre position yeah, that's the one where, oh my god, I saw a bit of that video as well. And, again, just like, what? The c factual claims are absolutely not her strong suite. I don't know that I would ever review another Kidology video, but um, I don't really want to either. Brother Mir set with the five dollars says, "I'm thinking of that parody. They'll dig up your bones meme, and it shows a picture uh, on the on the bottom of it with an archaeologist saying, "Neat bones." Yeah, exactly, right? Yeah. Chariot's video was so good. Please do. You want me to react to another Kidology video? Maybe in the future. I don't know. Um, I feel like reacting to Kidology 
Um, it, 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 I don't know. There's nothing, like, Kidology isn't doing anything particularly dangerous. Kidology is just, like, wrong, and her videos are confusing. Um, I find them damn near impossible to follow. Um, which is why we broke out the, uh, which is why we broke out the clocks, because the video about the left was just, it was just impossible. A thousand years from now, a gay man is going to stick your bones up his ass, so you better make sure he knows whether those bones are from a man or if he's going to accidentally end up having straight bone sex. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> okay, that's really... <laughs> that's good. Oh, banger. JS Masochist says... Kidology's work uh, is very manipulative for those who listen to her essays rather than watch them rather than watch them attentively because she purposely makes vague claims that can seem agreeable if you don't put put much thought into it. Um, yeah, I just don't know the stakes are that high. Most of Kidology's stuff is just like weird rambles that go nowhere. The conclusions are weird. Like, oh God, the 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 apologia for for explicit turfs in her other video was really weird. Very weird stuff. Anyway, great video if you want to laugh really hard because I will say we did have a lot of fun with that react. Here is the Andrew Callahan allegation story, which was not a drama mama, but was in the vein of drama mama. Here was, oh, this is like one of the last pieces of drama. These are like two of the last pieces of drama content that I think we basically ever did on this channel. Which was, this one was supporting Keffels when Keffels did a call out on Bad Bunny because of some of the stuff that Bad Bunny was saying at the time, who is now Kira Chats. And this one was drama but it was drama because these people specifically dk more more so than chud logic but um dk had like a weird axe to grind with me and like genuinely loses his mind every time i mention him so um hey chariot wonderful to have you Chariot. we were just mentioning you we just we were just talking about uh having watched your video on kidology and um uh, and my video on kidology from earl from early this year and then of course your video on Ch kidology and it's funny because we ran into in very different videos we ran into a lot of the same stuff um yeah kidology is a strange creator very very strange creator um yeah then we had the Hunter Avalone getting mad about neo pronouns. That was funny. That was a that was a funny situation. He got very very angry about neo pronouns and his argument made no sense. So, you know, pushed back on it. Here's the uh here's here's the little making fun of the conservatives buying suburban tanks. You guys remember this video? This one was a blast war zone right they see like a like a horrible horrible war zone they're like wow i'm very happy that i don't live in that war zone it would absolutely suck to have to live in a world where like you go outside and you run to your destination because you don't want to get blown up you don't want to get like cracked down on by like an occupying force no 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 in america suburban moms have become so deranged and of course suburban dads let's not forget those motherfuckers those fucking <laughs> Pit Viper. <laughs> I forgot how me I forgot how I forgot how fucking amped up I was during this segment. I was the thing is this segment. Look, I don't mean to laugh at my own joke, but I re I am now having memories flood back to me about how much I was laughing about this before I did my stream. Okay, like straight up this segment. I was so excited to do this segment because I'd been laughing about the fucking video of 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 her killer killer SUV. All the way up to the moment it was time for stream.
ass oakley ass motherfuckers with their their maga hats and their uh their american flag do rags or whatever they're called coming out there and being like i want to live in a prison i want i want my children to grow up walking through a fucking episode of star wars andor What's your take on home security systems, particularly ones with varying levels of CCTV? They're fucking useless. They are literally useless, okay? Hold on, let me tell a quick anecdote. When I was moving earlier this year, uh, my car got stolen while we were moving. Like, uh, we have a electric car and the car was accidentally left running and, uh, and, and we were loading things. So it was literally like less than True chariot chariot says demon mama is powered by joy the way Wall Street executives are powered by co cocaine seems healthier It is uh, Maybe maybe it doesn't give me the same level of mania But it does give me a lot of energy and I have had a lot of joy this year Okay, there has been so much tech grifting to make fun of we're gonna get there we get we're gonna get to watch the Apple, uh, the Apple Eye Vision, whatever they're called, the Apple goggles. We're gonna get to watch the beer goggles. Oh, it's gonna be great. Oh. <laughs> That's a clean burn in hell. That's right, Calliope. Clean burn in hell. Five minutes, uh, one of my partners hopped out of the car, ran upstairs to get a box. Somebody noticed that the car was running jumped in the car oh yeah this is me telling about my car getting stolen anyway great video small video a lot of people didn't catch this one this one only has 3.6 thousand views almost nobody watched this little short rant it's actually funny um i you know people keep saying oh you know um demon mama you ought to do more short videos but then people don't watch my short videos they all want to watch my long ones which I'm not complaining about that at all. Um, that's good for my channel for sure. But I always am surprised that people don't watch my little short rants. They're sometimes ridiculously fun. Anyway, let's do another one. Let's take a look. So then we have uh, Donald Trump's deranged anti-trans thing. I, as you can tell, I've been doing a lot less news coverage this year. I mentioned this in my previous stream talking about how my channel has changed, but um, I've wanted to move away from, um, I've wanted to move away from news coverage. Uh, I just don't like it that much anymore. I used to have a lot of fun with it, but honestly, I just find the cycle mind numbing at this point, And I think that I can do better with other stuff. I'm still gonna cover news from time to time, but I don't want this to be a news channel and also people don't seem to like to like be resent like it doesn't seem to be landing with people as much as it used to I'll, i i and i think part of that is just that there's been a lot of culture change online um i don't know yeah the news is psychotically depressing yeah yeah that also yep oh we gotta watch this meme this is the hard mommy meme. The first trans Metal Gear Solid villain predicted the future. This is a this is a straight up meme. I rarely ever post pure memes to my channel, but let's do it. The legacy of 9-11 is that these behemoths, these nations, these empires care nothing for those crushed in the mechanisms of their schemes. They'll use any cruelty necessary to manage you, to bind you into their schemes. They will manipulate you to death. People joke about eating the bugs, living in the pods, but have you looked around lately? The theater of security crawled into every aspect of our lives. Our neighborhoods are built with constant video surveillance and the same exact PA systems used in prisons. By the way, these are all my tweets. I'm reading my own tweets. Just so you know, I used to have the maddest tweet game ever, okay? It, it sucks that Twitter got set on fire and t completely destroyed because my tweet game was for the legends, okay? My Twitter page was like visiting the fucking Oracle at Delphi, okay? Straight up. We're all drowning in alienation and isolation and dissociation, stirring feverishly in quarantines only necessary because of the calculating inaction of meticulously brutal state constructs. Most of us were children when this particular cage was built around us. 
All of this, where were you, never forget nonsense, rings especially hollow this year. 2,461 people died in the United States yesterday. More will die today. It has been said that the plague is a measure of mankind. This organization of mankind has been measured and found lacking. True! What a banger. What a banger. That one turned out great. Just gotta say, true me, true me, based. Also, uh, Danny did the editing for that meme. Absolute legend. Absolute fucking legend. All right, we're progressing through time. We got the why do so many people lie about Demon Mama? Angel or devil? Killer thumbnail, by the way. Just legendary thumbnail, okay? Fantastic thumbnail. But, um, yeah, this one was me talking about why so many people spend so much time lying about me. Um, I wanted to talk about that real quick. Um, I, I needed, I need to talk about that real quick because, um, this year is proof, uh, that I could, that, that I could overcome that. And also that it required like a Herculean effort on my part to get it, to get out of that cycle. Um, in this video, I talk about like basically the way that my reputation was tarnished by other people, um, how people who were larger than me built narratives are using my face and name um, to sort of try and with the explicit goal of killing my career. Um, I'm not even joking, not even exaggerating even a little bit. That was explicitly said um, that that was their goal. Um, and uh, this year has proven that, uh, this has been the year I have grown the most, the fastest this year. This has been the greatest year of growth for my channel. Um, and it has been the year that I decided to go basically cold turkey on, uh, engaging at all, um, with a lot of stuff. Like, I mean, even, um, like certain, like certain lies have, I just completely stopped touching completely. Even if they were heinous, I stopped even bothering engaging with them at all. Um, and obviously, you you can't like that. You can't do that all the time. You have to be able to engage with some things. But also, there are certain types of people, and there are certain groups on the internet that you literally cannot win if you try and engage with them because they aren't honest on a fundamental level. There is nothing about truth engaged. It is about building narratives. It is about collapsing context. It is about uh, smearing your reputation by any means necessary. And uh, this year has proven that I was able to overcome it, that my decisions at the beginning of this year have paid off. Um, focusing on my own stuff, focusing on my community, uh, uh, stepping away from trying to defend myself from people lying about me, um, uh, with, with, again, very few exceptions, uh, not getting baited into other people's cycles, uh, deliberately and aggressively severing myself from certain sections of the internet that are particularly toxic, basically cutting out toxic, uh, toxic people, um, has been a, a r ridiculous success, an unbelievable success. It has been, inc it was not easy either. Um, and I, like, I wish that I had, there's a lot of times where I wish that I had done that earlier, and I feel like my channel... Um, I don't know. Maybe there's, to a certain degree, there is no way that I could have, um, avoided certain aspects of the damage that my channel sustained, uh, from people just smearing my reputation completely un unapologetically and falsely. Um, some of that was basically unavoidable. Um, you know, but, uh, but other things I wish that I had learned earlier, like, um, like, I, I do wish that I had realized earlier what I was dealing with. Um, that I was dealing with, like, unironic mass gaslighting um, uh, from people who, uh, you know, I had some level of connection to, but, um, but v almost entirely online. It, it's a really complicated thing because um, 
on the internet, there's this there's this weird thing that happens where, um, especially in like drama farming cycles, where people can become ridiculously familiar with you without ever having met you in person. We talk about this a lot with parasociality, but but there is a parasocial element that can happen between streamers as well. Streamers can become obsessed with you as a subject, uh, as a character, and uh, they can even begin to write mass fan fiction about you. And it's very unhealthy, um, but you have to deal with it because it's your fucking face and your fucking life. Um, and sometimes the answer to dealing with it is to recognize that, um, is to recognize that there's no, like that that you will only feed them by engaging at all even if you're doing so rightfully even if you're defending yourself rightfully even if you have every right to defend yourself even if you didn't do anything wrong even responding to them is giving them something to farm is giving them something to try and and build a narrative around and they will um anyway that's that that was the beginning of this this that that was the beginning of this year this video was all the way back in february early february was when i did this video you know um yeah and uh and it was in this video that i was basically saying um God, so many people here. Yeah. So many people mentioned in that video. But that video was me talking about lies that had been perpetuated about me, and it was the beginning, uh, the true beginning of a new approach, which also, uh, another part of my new approach is uh, if I need to respond to something, then I respond to it, I make a strong response, and then I let it go. Uh, I, I refuse to engage in the stupid back and forth narrative war bullshit. I can give my response and, uh, and call it good. Uh, there are so goddamn many people who are very interested in basically creating a, like, I, I mean, it's easy to call it content farming, but it really is what it is. They're looking to find an excuse to fill time with something that is, uh, exciting and they're using themselves and often someone else as the fertilizer for that thing and I just have no interest in engaging in that type of thing anymore and my increasing refusal to engage in it which again not been perfect I've made mistakes this year but this year my record as we will see as we scroll through here has been really solid yeah Wildland Blazer said it's honestly more refreshing as a viewer as well when we don't need to feel riled up every week or whatever I like this is that is one area where I actually feel um like it's um like it's uh like it's unhealthy you know um sometimes I will see like drama centric communities uh continually upping the ante and it reminds me of Fox News it reminds me of um, how Fox News keeps their viewers in like a constant state of fear and panic. And I actually wonder, like I actually start to believe like this might be mentally, like severely mentally unhealthy, not just for the creator, but for the viewers as well to basically uh, even well-intentioned viewers and maybe even more so for well-intentioned viewers because well-intentioned viewers are finding themselves spending each week worrying about uh, a, a new crisis that has been uh, created or whatever. I just, I think it's a bad, a really bad cycle. I think that it creates like misery. And yet, you know, humans love to seek that. They love that, th they love the thrill, even if it makes them miserable. That's why I think we need to be extra careful about it, you know, because like, it's so easy to get people stuck in a cycle. And I don't know, I just think it's, a, I think it's bad. Default X says, yes, you can induce schizophrenia like that. I don't know. I don't know enough about whether you can induce it, but I do believe that like a persistent sense of paranoia and anxiety that is being induced with, uh, you know, with parasocial elements. Yeah. Is, um, I think it's absolutely, uh, I think it's a possibility. I believe it's possible.
You know, I don't know about how how possible, but I believe it. My apparent my parents are addicted to news match max, especially my mom. It is bad. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Far right news do this shit like crazy. Like um, you see Fox News viewers. If you ever have had a family member who gets super into Fox News, I'm sure many of you have. You go and talk to them, and they are constantly stressed out. They are like, they literally constantly believe that they are in a state of danger and they're unable to even enjoy their lives often because they're turning something on every night and being given a flood of negative emotions. Soy sauce 608. What I appreciate most about Demon Mom is that she puts out positivity and seems to just make the online space better rather than bringing everyone down. Thank you. I don't know if I don't know if it's positivity necessarily that I always put out. I'm definitely very critical sometimes and I can definitely be pretty harsh, but what I try to put out is meaningfulness. Uh what I try to do is uh is spend time making something, creating something. Um giving making something new, putting out new thoughts, original thoughts. And of course, obviously, there is a positive aspect of that, which is that I love making people laugh. It's one of my main passions in life is making people laugh. So that part is definitely positive. But Yeah. Lauren X Pandemus says, I basically traumatize myself with all the drama, and to this day I can make myself angry for hours just thinking about it. Listen, trust me, I know what that's like. Uh, like, I, I've said this a hundred times on my show, but with, previous to being a streamer, you know, I lived a very quiet life. Um, you know, I was a freelance writer. Uh, you know, I knew, I lived a very um, generally like a offline life. You know, obviously I had a Twitter account. I follow things on the internet and I was involved in a couple of online communities right before I started streaming. But um, I wasn't like a, you know, streaming was a total change. And I went from having a very small social circle to having tons of people aware about me and also hating my guts. Um, and also trying to get me to, to be, to trying to bait me into conflict over and over and over again. There was a point where the conflict baiting was coming from nearly everyone I seemed to know. Every person who, who, uh, who, who I had run into professionally online was trying to bait me into some form of conflict. And it is maddening. It's maddening and unhealthy. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Have you considered stand-up? I have actually, but I don't know. I have, the thing is, I feel like I am not as talented as stand-up comedians. Um, obviously, in a certain way, what I do is like a form of stand-up. I riff off of stuff in the chat. I make jokes that are designed to provoke reactions to the chat. I ask questions. I do basically crowd work with my chat. But for some reason, the, I, the, the stage portion of it gives me a different type of fear. There is something that I've always found uh, that puts me in the right space for streaming is the fact that at the end of the day, if I really want to, right now, I can end my stream and go chill. I, I don't have to, that's it. Some people will be bummed and that's okay, but I'll be back in the future, you know what I mean? But like, if I want to, I can just reach up, turn off the camera and go chill. And I like having that ability. Uh, I know this comes as a surprise, but um, like for most of my life, I was not uh, a, a very social person and I have ha always had a lot of social anxiety. Which I've learned to overcome over the years, getting all the way to this point. I'm proud of myself for that, but it's still challenging even to this day. So, anyway, let's continue, huh? Let's continue. I know a lot of people say that, like they would have never guessed that. Well, I, I, so in my early 20s, I needed to get a job. And so I decided that I was going to learn how to be able to do sales because there was a there was a great job opportunity. It would it would help me with my bills. I wanted to learn how to do that. And it was a very big change for me because um, you know, uh I I had struggled with a lot of socialization. Uh not I shouldn't say it like I struggled with socialization. I had friends and stuff, but I I was 
a person who was very nervous about performances. I, I actively avoided getting in front of stages for most of my life. In early high school, I was, I genuinely struggled with socialization when I was in early high school. And I decided that it was time for me to change and that I would learn how to do that. Uh, because I, I came to believe that socializing was a skill. And in truth, it is. There are some people who are just really naturally good at it. I was not one of those people. Um, I, uh, you know, I had, I had friends, close friends, but I was not some kind of like social butterfly, um, when I was younger. Um, and it just took time for me to learn that and a lot of effort. And now I found ways to be comfortable. A lot of it, a lot of learning how to like socialize for you, um, is, uh, is, is learning like where you stand and what makes you comfortable. That's what I'm saying. That's This is really rambly, but that's what I'm saying about the uh, the camera thing, you know? For me, streaming makes it possible for me to... I'm broadcasting to 420 people right now, uh, and and I'm, I don't feel the type of fear that I have if I was going to be going up on a stage or something like that, even though there's more people than any stage I've ever been on in my entire life, you know? So anyway... Let's continue through the year in review. Let's continue. Oh, thanks, Cleaver. I appreciate that. It's been a lot of work. So then we had the infamous retard stream. You guys remember this one? <laughs> that one got me in some hot water. That was that got me in some hot water. Anybody remember what I actually talked about in that stream? Observette says, hey, your hippy dippy intro was so good. Thank you. Deeply appreciate that. I had a lot of fun making it. And then the left, the death of left wing Twitter. Damn. Here we go. The death of left wing, left wing Twitter. Wait, nobody, you guys don't remember what the retard stream was about? It was about me talking about the word retard and why I don't use it casually. Obviously, I'm not censoring myself now because I'm talking about the name of the stream and the word itself, but I don't use the term uh, on my platform. I don't use it for jokes. You know, it's not my thing. Vine says, yeah, I remember you said the arsler for five hours. It was insane. I couldn't believe my ears. My jaw dropped. Tears leaked down my face. The world started to crumble around me. <laughs> exactly. Nah, it was a, it was a it was I think it was a good stream. It made some people mad though because they didn't actually watch the stream. Kind of funny. Kind of ironic. A lot of people thought that I was having a different position than I uh than I was, but this is the left the death of left wing Twitter. This was the end of February. Great great stream. Literally. It is considered a good omen if the body is consumed by vultures. And let me say, of, 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 uh, of all of the things that we can say about the online left, the Twitter left in particular, uh, it is being consumed by vultures, okay? Oh, absolutely. There is no doubt about that part, okay? So true, is that not even more true? now than it was at the beginning of the year again my vision is impeccable this space is fucking roasted thank you windleby i appreciate that and that's why by the way 2024 grand gardener year of the grand gardener we are going to we are going to fertilize that soil. We are going to plant some seeds, and we are going to see just how beautiful of a garden we can grow together. That is the that is the that is the theme for 2024. Very excited for it. The the Twitter left is completely obliterated. There is just there is just nothing left. Oh yeah, then of course we have the ending. Tell the tales 
of the brothers gone Desolation Devastation What a mess we made What a mess we made wrong. When it all went wrong Watching From the edge Of the circus for the games to begin Gladiators Draw their swords From their ranks For Armageddon I'm nuclear God damn God damn What a killer track I don't want to play it all over again but can we not just take a moment all the way back in late February of this year? Have I not foreseen? Did I not call it so hard? Did I not? Did I not call it so hard? That is Nuclear by Mike Oldfield. What a killer song. Nuclear by Mike Oldfield. It's from the uh, Metal Gear Solid soundtrack, Metal Gear Solid 5. Hold on. It's on YouTube. You can literally just search nuclear by uh Here, I'll link it for you. There, somebody linked it already. It's there's like 100 versions. Look at this. You search it, there's like 500 versions of it. Nice. Even Sylvia Gunner ripped it. <laughs> really? Anyway, sick as fuck. Um, so yeah, death of left-wing Twitter. I was 100% right. Um, Siva Gunner? Siva Gunner? I don't know what that is. Um, Silva Gunner? I don't know. Um, but uh, what was I going to say? Um, yeah, I kind of called that shit, didn't I? Anyway, uh, you all can go check it out if you want to see how correct I was. But my God, was I correct. Welcome! President Sunday and the squids come on in and get comfortable. We are doing we are in the midst of an absolutely legendary 2023 Demon Mama year in review. We are going back looking at some of my old takes talking about them We're going through and seeing all the videos that I made talking about the funniest moments. We're gonna watch a whole bunch of clips We're gonna laugh a bunch. We've already been laughing a bunch. We've been riffing. We've been goofing. We've been gagging We've even been, oh my God, can you believe it? We've even talked about drama. Woo! Isn't that crazy? Crazy, right? Come on in and get comfortable. Would love to have you join us. Come on in. It's been a wild ride so far. Believe it or not, we're three hours into the stream already. Three hours and it's been firing. Just... Just meme after banger after meme after banger. Let's continue, shall we? Shall we? So then we have the the Hogwarts Legacy Discourse. Which, obviously, I had the best take on ever. I don't have much else to say about it at this point. The Hogwarts Legacy Boycott... Um, I said it at the time that the, the major success of the Hogwarts Legacy boycott was generating bad press. And even that, I don't even know if that's been like a, a, a serious problem in the long run. Um, I, I have always held the position that consumer boycotts are generally, with very few exceptions, a very weak option. Um, 
most of the time because you're contending with mega corporations that just don't care. They'll simply destroy the team of people that might be working on the product instead of actually making any major changes. Um, obviously, there are some types of boycotts that can work, but this one, sorry, don't think it did. Now nobody plays Hogwarts Legacy or talks about it. Some people have. A lot of people did play it, but it didn't have a lot of lasting power, and it didn't even get remembered at this year's Game Awards. Nobody even mentioned Hogwarts Legacy at the Game Awards. Isn't that crazy? People completely forgot that it existed on that level. So, like, like even gamers forgot about it. A lot of people did play it at first, but it just had no lasting power. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't even know. The game looked boring to me. It looked very boring to me. Um, but I imagine there was probably some okay stuff in it. I don't know. Um, it's kind of funny, right? Like, if you were if you were on left Twitter or even left YouTube during the Hogwarts situation, you would have thought it was the end of the goddamn world. And it did. It was a dud. It didn't mean anything. Um, people fucking burned bridges over where they fell to, where they fell on the Hogwarts legacy boycott situation. What a stupid thing to burn a bridge over. Um, like, just hilarious, honestly. Um, and it didn't even matter. Hell, even the video didn't even do that good. I'm looking back here and I'm like, well, I guess it did. I guess it did do a little bit better than the videos around it. Man, my views were so much lower back then. Anyway. Then we had the, the Conspiracy Mama videos, which we haven't done that in a while. But to be honest, the Conspiracy Mama videos weren't that popular. The, people liked the Conspiracy Mama streams, and I had fun doing them, but the videos just weren't that popular. I should bring that back for 2024. It's really fun content, and we should try to get people into it. It's true, my views were so much lower. My videos have been killing it lately. Look at this, like think about this. My latest video has almost as many views as this video from nine months ago. This video has had nine months to build up views and my new videos will completely blow that out of the water in a, in a couple of days. I've been growing a lot, been impressive. Then here's my Utah, oh yeah, sorry. I hope I gotta put this back on. Then we have the Utah situation, the Utah trip, which was, I, I took a small trip to Utah. Unfortunately, uh, 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 Doe got sick on the trip, which sucked. Doe got some kind of food poisoning on, this tr on the trip. So we didn't get to do everything we wanted to do on the trip. We mostly had to take it easy, but sometimes that happens, you know? We still got to do some fun stuff. We still got to see some really cool stuff, but it kind of sucked that uh, Doe got sick. Yeah. Cleaver120 says, I really like the Conspiracy Mama content. I might even use some of the conspiracies for TTRPGs and other story ideas. Great idea. So then we had the follow-up to the Philosophy Tube drama. Philosophy tube drama is going too far. Yeah, it did go too far. People behaved completely deranged towards philosophy tube. Um, and admittedly, philosophy tube made the mistake of discoursing on Twitter, but um, but people behaved insanely towards philosophy tube. Please stream Metal Gear Solid. I will. Don't worry. We're going to do a whole Metal Gear Solid thing, but I got to get through Dark Souls. And the last month the last two months of streaming i haven't been doing as much gaming content again i've fallen off the horse uh uh um of gaming content because last month obviously i had like a, a series of dental i had my my teeth out i got sick it sucked november sucked and then this month we've been just busy just busy 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 what did philosophy tube do this was philosophy that was philosophy tube um 
Philosophy Tube made a critique of the concept of gender dysphoria um, as a like diagnosable trait, which I think was actually pretty much correct. Um, most of what Philosophy Tube made, in my opinion, Philosophy Tube made a few offhanded comments on Twitter that were received badly, and it's understandable why people misunderstood them. They were kind of flip comments. But her overall argument was just completely correct. The idea that like um, that like uh, gender uh, gender dysphoria is is kind of a term that is used to make trans people seem more to like other trans people to a greater degree. When in reality, um, cis people experience the exact same thing all the time. They don't have to get diagnosed as gender dysphoria. They just get what they need to solve the problem. Like when a cis when a cis man, um, you know, in his sixties is like, oh, my energy's been low and I'm just not feeling myself. And then the doctor says, well, here's a testosterone patch prescription. Here's a te testosterone shot prescription. This should help. And then he goes, wow, I feel so great. Feels I feel great. My T levels must have been low. They don't call that gender dysphoria. There's no special category. So gender dysphoria has been like, is like a thing that tons of people deal with. The, the, the actual things that you're dealing with is something that cis people deal with as well, just in a different way. But we call it something special and, uh, when, it's, when it's trans people and it, and it has the effect of making trans people seem like exotic and a special exception, which is kind of a problem. I'm not saying there's no, uh, I don't think that there's not like, again, I don't want to restart the whole thing. You guys can go watch the video if you want to hear the full take. I think it was a fair critique of the concept of gender dysphoria. And it was also hot on the tails of um, Philosophy Tube's video about getting care for gender dysphoria in the UK, which is a nightmare, which kind of illustrates her point, which is that gender dysphoria has been used even though it can be a useful term for some people to describe what they're going through. It has been ultimately been used to create a special category, um, a, a discriminatory category to slot trans people into, but with like, you know, fancy medical sounding language. So it doesn't seem like that's what's happening. Wendell B says, it's just kind of like not something we can really dispense with right now. That might be true. Um, that might be true, but also um, it, it, it's important to be able to grapple with it and to be able to chip away at the, at the problematic elements of concepts and be able to reformulate it, which is kind of what her job is. Like that's kind of her thing, you know, uh, as, a, as a, you know, as an opinion haver, like that's what she wants to do. She wants to criticize ideas and get people thinking about them. And I don't think she ever advocated for throwing away the concept completely or whatever. I think it was more about, hey, like the way that we engage with this concept is is bad, but which it is. Um, raised by field mice with the tier one sub. Thank you so much for supporting my show. Thank you for another great year, Demon Mama. This is where I go to restore my brain after school and it helps me keep going. Happy to provide. Thank you for supporting the show. Thank you very, very much. Anyway, let's continue, right? So then we have the beginning of the Star Wars arc. Star Wars The Phantom Menace is pretty good, actually. Now, a lot of people did not watch all my Star Wars reviews. If you did not watch my Star Wars reviews, you should go watch them, okay? A lot of them have accumulated more views, but if you can see, they did not get a lot of views. And that's because my channel, while I have always done reviews, I have not always put my reviews up as videos, but guess what? More reviews are coming in 2024, so we gotta get people to watch them. We gotta pump those numbers. We gotta introduce the newcomers to the reviews. All the Star Wars reviews, you can just search Star Wars on my channel and you'll find all of them. They are very fun. Even if you don't generally watch review content, I promise we have so much fun. I rant and rave, we get in arguments with chat. They're all really, really fun videos, okay? They're really fun, all right? So we had Phantom, Phantom Menace, Attack of the Clones, Clone Wars. Then we had Revenge of the Sith. Then we had the OG Trilogy. Those, those were posted up here later, right? Wait, where's the OG Trilogy ones? 
Here we go. New Hope. Yeah, we took we took a little break from him for a while. Damn. Review Jedi Survivor? Yeah, I gotta do that. I gotta do that. Anyway, we also had the Ca the Anna Kasparian flame out. I can't believe that happened this year. Then the train wrecks Hassan XQC debate, which was so funny. Oh man, that was so funny. <laughs> oh god, that was good. Hey, here's my Signalis review, which nobody watched. I'm going to post this in chat because you all should go watch this. This is my Signalis review. Did you ever review Andor? I did review Andor. Cosmos, Cosmos Infinity, Cosmos of Infinity says, you go pretty deep into your media, media analysis. It's some of my favorite stuff from you. It's my favorite stuff to create. I love, love, love talking about media. And I'm going to do more of it. And I'm only going to get better as time goes on. I would love it. Uh, if more people would do it, but everybody needs to go right now. That link is my Signalis review. You should go watch it, and then you should play Signalis. Signalis is an absolutely legendary um, horror game. Oh my god! Oh my god! I can actually play the music from Signalis. Oh, I should play the music from Signalis. Listen to this music. I forgive you for now. That's very Silent Hill. Yes, Signalis is a spiritual successor to Silent Hill, like in every way. Goosebumps. I did, Windleby, yes, I did. And my favorite one. My, perhaps my favorite track from the entire game. Goosebumps. Yes, I love Jacob's Ladder. Terrifying film. the follow-up which is the alternate version of this song the terrifying the terrifying version
this track started playing in the game, I was so fucking scared. You have no idea. It was the scariest shit ever. Here's the linky, by the way. Bam, bam. The musician, the music, oh, not the first link. I, I bungled the first link. Here's the link. Um, I, I, uh, the musician for this game follows me on Twitter. So cool. Cicada sirens and 1000 eyes. Anyway, let's continue. We got to keep going. We got to make it through the rest of these. We have, so that was the Signalis review. You should go watch it. Oh my god, look at this. Oh, this video was incredible, by the way. One of my one of my more successful videos of this year was me reacting to Believe It or Not, talking about Christian nationalism. We gotta talk about Christianity more next year. That's gonna be a big one. Next year, next year, we're taking on God. Yep, for sure, for sure. Oh, Darkwood. Oh, my God. I, I, that was from last year, though. Darkwood. Oh, my God. Darkwood is... Oh, I gotta replay Darkwood. I've played so many good horror games in the last few years, it's actually crazy. Anyway. Yeah, so Christian Nationalism video. Then we had... This was the video, the Tracing the Decline of Boogie2988. Now, you might think, wait a minute... Is that the Boogie documentary? No, that was from all the way back at the beginning of this year when Boogie was, when, when we decided to go take a look at a fresh hot Boogie video of him e-begging to try and get people to donate to cover his, uh, his crypto losses and look at where that went. My God. This year we have the, uh, oh, we had the, the, the reaction to ContraPoints. That was a huge one. And then, of course, my follow-up. Do you guys remember that? Wait, Chariot. Is Darkwood good? I got it for free. Darkwood is... Oh, my God. You need to play it ASAP. Holy shit. It is so fucking goddamn scary. It is legendary. Okay, oh, my God. I have a, I have a, a, a video of me playing it up on the stream because I wanted people to play it so bad. It is so good. Here, let me play you a, let me play you a track from, uh, from Darkwood, okay? This is gonna hit like crazy once you actually play the game. Okay, ready? We're gonna get some Darkwood music going on in here. Here we go. Hold on. Oh, God, I love this game so much. They got the hour version. Yeah, we'll just do the hour version. Fuck it. By the way, um, this game um, is another one of those games that correctly simulates uh, an acid trip, except um, the worst one you could possibly imagine. The game's graphics are actually meant to des are designed to simulate an acid trip, um, and they do a really good job on it. It is genuinely fucking horrifying. Yes, you did, Danny Fallen. You really did it. Jesus Christ, this game is so good.
Let's do it. So then we have uh, uh, the Matt Walsh hack. Remember when that happened? Wait, does anybody remember why I did a part two of my JK Rowling ContraPoints video? Does anybody remember? Does anybody remember that? I do. I remember why. Yep, okay, good, people remember. It was mostly because I, I felt like I didn't review the end properly, and I, I was a little too charitable when I felt like the end was actually pretty uncharitable, and the more I thought about it, the more it bothered me. It was mostly because um, ContraPoints used the end of the video to, like, take a big swing at Bosch, and it really didn't make much sense. Um... It didn't even line up thematically with the video, um, in my opinion, and it weakened the video. And I, I, at first, I basically didn't care that much because, um, because I was just like, oh, you know, Vosh is a big boy. He can, he can handle himself. And also, like, whatever, it's just beef. But then I remembered, wait a second, this is like a pretty high profile, like, video essay that's saying some pretty major stuff and having like a shitty petty beef at the end is actually a really low move um, and it sucked. So I went back and I made a part two where I talked about, you know, why I wanted to issue a small correction. Yeah. It went completely against the thesis of the video. Yeah, it did. Yeah. Yeah. So then we had oh the Muppet Babies video. Do you guys remember this this killer video where we laughed about the Muppet Babies go woke? God, that was a fun one. My Keffels cancellation. You guys remember why I canceled Keffels back in the day? I hope you all remember. It was a serious issue. My lovely, lovely imps, I have a bone to pick with Keffels. Yeah, that's right. You heard me. Keffels. You know. Kef Everybody's wrong. You all have noodle brain. You guys don't even remember the level that I'm on. <laughs> noodle brained idiots. You fools. You fools. You've all forgotten the real reason. How, how short is your memory? That you can't even remember the sins committed against me. Fools, funny fish, you know, uh, wigglers, you know. I have a bone to pick with Keffels, okay? A few months ago, Gila Monster remembers. Gila Monster remembers. I began work on an incredible and secret project, the likes of which this side of the internet has never, ever seen, okay? In my humble Seattle backyard, I created a questionably legal sanctuary for what the local rubes might call fairy tale creatures, okay? And in this garden, I was able to cultivate a growing community of gnomes, nymphs, pixies, wisps, dryads, treants, brownies, elves, deer tours, devas, kodama, leshies, reshies, creshies, all kinds of peaceful fey beings could thrive here. That is, until Keffels attacked. Allied with an army of brutally corporate Keeblers, and lecherous leprechauns. Keffels used the cover of wellness, of needing time off to get better, of needing a mental health break, to destroy my garden, to trod on the caps of my mushrooms, to scatter my lovely creatures to the wind. My garden was once replete with playful tricksters, and now it is a wasteland full of banshees, goblins, red caps, and worse than anything else, commodified cookie production. My disappointment is immeasurable 
and my life has been utterly and completely ruined. What's arguably even worse than any of this is the fact that in, a, 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 in, in cooperation with Keffels, the leprechauns put a curse on me that has completely prevented me uh, from being able to show any evidence of this because of the curse. The curse that was placed on me means that I am forced to say no if anybody asks for any evidence of Keffel's attack. So I can't even prove to the world that this attack actually happened. Oh, but it did. Oh, but it did. My shoes have been unrepaired. My soil has remained untilled. My abandoned and forgotten tools are no longer enchanted with the loving presence of a spirit. My mushrooms remain unsat upon. And instead, there's this ungodly shrieking coming from the backyard at all times. And it's because of Keffels and her dark alliance. You know, I've had it up to here. I've had it up to here with people standing Keffels. People going around and being like, wow, Keffels, oh, Keffels, she's funny. And, and she posts memes. I can't wait for Keffels. Well, now she's back. And now she's gonna get away with it again. She's gonna get somebody, she's gonna drive out someone else's gnomes. I was just standing between you and Keffels. Was the shrieking pleasant or unpleasant? Unpleasant, just definitively unpleasant. Don't ask me for evidence because it will make the curse act up. I don't want to flare up, okay? It's some, it's some heinous dark magic that those leprechauns put on me, okay? I can't even find, uh, they took all the pots of gold, okay? They took all me lucky charms while they were at it. So <laughs> I forgot, I forgot about that line. <laughs> don't ask, don't ask or I'll yell at you. <laughs> Disgusting. <sighs> now, of course, and of course, that's where we get into the actual video talking about, um, talking about, I don't even remember. I don't even, I, oh, it was about the, the really shitty article that was written. It was actually, it's funny. I was roasting you all because at the end it was actually, this was early on in the, the, the noodle saga. Did you pre-write that? Um, uh, the only part that I pre-wrote of that was, um, the little section where I was describing the um, the garden. Uh, the rest was all improv. Uh, and keep in mind, I wrote it right before stream. So I just wrote up a little thing of notes to, to remind me what, what jokes I wanted to say. And then I flew off it from there. But the vast majority of that was just improv. Uh, the only part that I wrote in preparation was like, um, was like, the part where I like list off all the fairy tale creatures and everything like that. And that's just because I needed to, I needed notes to remember it. <laughs> uh. Now I've got it with the autism. Oh, excellent. Oh, fantastic. Mixed dizzy. Put that in the clip channel for sure. Why did you skip over your confession? Wait, which part? Which confession? <laughs> you don't understand. I was the Ripper all along. Damn. Oh man, that was such a great playthrough. What a great playthrough. Oh man, playing through Revengeance was so much fun. God, I had so much fun with the, with the Revengeance playthrough. I can't believe the Revengeance playthrough was this year. Hey, thank you, Pyro Guy.
Thank you, Lauren X Pandamus. Anyway, yeah, um, uh, I had a lot of fun with the Keffel's cancel Keffel's cancellation video. That was a fun one. That was a killer one. Damn. Let's see. Wait, when did that one happen? When did that video happen? Oh God, we're about to get into some heavy stuff. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. We still have so much to go. I did so much this year. What the fuck? Why did I do so much this year? Why do I work so hard? Do you guys know how fucking crazy I work for this channel? We're not even like, wait a second. This was in, this was in April. Oh my God. We're only in April. We still have so much more stuff. The Keffel's cancellation was in April. Then we had the Muppet Babies video. By the way, this one is an underappreciated gem. You guys fucking... No, no, no! I didn't mean to do that! No! I didn't mean to... Oh. We're almost there. I, I accidentally... I meant to right-click. Oh. Muppet Babies. Underappreciated video. Okay? Underappreciated. Recognize Gonzo. So they're excited there's a new princess that they don't recognize. What? Behavior. God told me that I can control my child and make my child do whatever I want. It's my God given right to make my child do whatever I want. You guys remember Matt Walsh's insane rant about how he violates his children's consent all the time? Yeah, really, it seems like there's a through line in the conservative movement about loving to hurt children. I've got, let me tell you something. I violate my kids' consent all the time. Your crown's all True! Matt Walsh fucking sucks. Man, what a fucking gross loser. Anyway, awesome video. Muppet Babies Go Woke. Genuinely awesome video. Then we got into the Crowder situation. Crowder setting himself on fire. Then we got the Michael Knowles sissy hypno video. God damn. God damn. True, I was Spyro Gal. It's crazy. Everybody's everybody's on Matt Walsh these days, but I, I was reacting to Matt Walsh way back in the day. True, it's true. The sissy hypno one is incredible. Conservatives turning gay from hypnosis videos? That's literally what he's talking about. Yeah, the Michael Knowles did a sissy hypno video. He, he ranted about sissy hypnosis. Secret. Orbiting around the forest moon of Endor. This weapon was originally designed to ensure the alphabet mafia had full grasp on the entirety of the Galactic Republic. But unfortunately, that's awesome, Nasty. Michael Knowles discovered the truth and now we have to watch him quiver in fear because we will not be stopped. Listen up. The guest is Genevieve. Well, today- Sorry, hold on a second. It's your lucky day, sweet baby kazoo. My guest is in fact, uh, Genevieve Gluck, uh, women's rights campaigner, founder of Re Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. I know that I'm pausing literally 10 seconds into the clip. This lady's name is Genevieve Gluck, <laughs> which to me is like inviting- I forgot her name was Gluck. Peter Swallow onto your show. It's just, uh, can, P can, can Bigot stop having the most porn names you can possibly imagine? Like Johnson Gargler, like come the fuck on, too much. It's too much. I can't. I can't do it. Let's go anyway. Sorry. Let's go. Let's go. Dukes, I'm almost certain that I'm mispronouncing that, even though I've read the name of this publication a thousand times. This is what's so embarrassing when you read instead of hear these things. Uh, but it is an unapologetically pro-woman outlet uh, focused on gender identity. And Genevieve can shed some light on this phenomenon that, that frankly, as I've said on the show, I don't even want to look into because I have been told and then I've read on different fora that talk about this phenomenon 
that there is a kind of pornography that is a fora, fora, apparently a driver of the transgender identity that is so perverse. A driver of the transgender identity. <laughs> <laughs> yes! Yes! Watch the sissy hypno! Watch it! Yes! That it, it, it constitutes a kind of hypnosis where men will say, I was a normal guy, I lived to be 41, 42, and I was basically normal, but then I fell into this kind of pornography. So true! And it essentially melted my brain. I had a nervous breakdown. Now I think that I'm a woman. So rather than have to expose myself to that, and then, you know, I'll have to go to confession, potentially my brain gets melted, I can just talk to Genevieve about it. Genevieve, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you so much for having me on the show. So there's a lot I want to talk about with you. We don't have nearly enough time, so maybe we'll just have to have you back and talk about it at greater length. But can you just give not only the audience, but me a rundown? What is, among all of the types of pornography that lead to transgenderism, what is this hypnosis pornography? Well, you touched on a good point there. There are many types of pornography that are sort of involved with the transgender movement. Mm. Um, but hypnosis pornography is a little bit different in that it incorporates your lifestyle. Sweet baby kazoo said. Michael knows. You will never stop us. Our sissy hypno will bring your disgusting movement to its knees. All of your boys will become sissies before us. You cannot stand before the dark side. Oh, God. Okay, jokes aside. Jokes aside, everybody. Um, of course, this is not the first time that conservatives have had uh, complete and utter mental breakdowns over the existence of hypnosis porn. So let me just take a moment for the, just in case there's anybody out there who is, anyway, I'm proud of this video. And this video only got 3.5 thousand views. Can you believe that? You want to see the rest of it because it is also very, very funny. Okay, we keep going, all right? This is a, we still got, there's still 10 more minutes in that video. Put that one on your watch laters, okay? Only got 3,500, only got 3,500 views. That's it. That's it, total. I know, right? It's one of the short videos. I told you. People don't watch my short videos. It's so weird. Some of the short videos are some of my funniest bits. Also, I know that what, what's coming up soon is we have another Michael Knowles one, which is legendary. But we have to get through these ones. Look at this. We got, got the writer's strike coverage based. We got Donald Trump torching his own debate, his own legal defense. God, that was so good. The unraveling of Ollie London. Oh my God, what a legendary moment when Ollie London went on H3H3. H3. We got the reason why Tucker Carlson got fired. We got a whole bunch of Star Wars reviews. Look at that. Star Empire Strikes Back, Force Awakens, Return of the Jedi. I don't know why those fell out of order, but still. And then it finally happened. And then it finally happened. The Illuminati drama mama. Bam, 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 bam. All of it happened right here. Look at that. The glass pyramid. Also, the most legendary thumbnail. Some of the best thumbnails this channel has ever seen in the history of the entire channel. Nasties, nasty redacted, the god of thumbnails, okay? The glass pyramid. Boom, 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 boom! Look at those! What fucking, let's zoom those up. Can we zoom those the fuck up? Look at those beautiful thumbnails. Thank you so much, another bored person. 
And yes, I think that will happen. Another board person says, I'm just waiting for the day we finally get another Republican candidate, na this time named Willie Richard Z Johnson. There's n it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Nasty is so talented. Also, the... Uh, oh, oops. Hold on, I got to zoom out a little bit now. Hey, look at this! The Tears of the Kingdom... The Tears of the Kingdom review, which is true. There's a lot of things I didn't like about Tears of the Kingdom. You know, I criticized Tears of the Kingdom pretty heavily, but one thing that is absolutely true, it is a it is it is the sexiest that's that that uh well maybe the second sexiest, but it's the sexiest of the modern games, which I'm very happy about because um the Zelda games tend to be actually Nintendo generally. Nintendo tends to be very sexually conservative, so it was nice to see a game that had so much uh, comfort, um, even though it still had some problems. For example, the fact that they uh, refused to ever just actually have people be gay. That was a big flaw, but I talk about that in the video. I just got a copy of Tears of the Kingdom that I ordered in the mail because of your Zelda reviews. You're going to have a lot of fun with it. Tears of the Kingdom is a very fun game. I played a ton of it. I have a lot of critiques for it still as well, but it's still an, a legendary game. Absolutely. Yeah, nasty. 100%. 100%. Yeah, um, obviously Majora's Mask is, is like one of the sexiest of the um, games, but it's pretty weird. Um, I don't want to get into that right now. I don't want to, if I, if you get me on that, it'll be forever. Okay. So let's see. Then we had the, uh, the first time we ever reacted to, uh, Alurinati. That was legendary. The last Jedi review. Fantastic. Fantastic. We, the stop the bleed.org safer gun culture. I gotta get, I gotta do more gun culture vids in 2024 for sure. That's something that I haven't um, that I haven't done in a long time. I've I've I haven't been I haven't been following up on it. I got to the Pride discourses. Excellent video. Very proud of this one. This is one you all should go. Uh, you guys should. This is one that you guys should fucking go review. Okay, because get this one ready. Okay, this one right here is the. Pride 2023 Discourse Guide. Talking about all the different arguments and things that people will talk about. Killer video. Very proud of this one. Star Wars Rise of Skywalker review. This video, this video is criminally underrated, okay? Criminally underrated is my Star Wars Rise of Skywalker review. I had so much fun in this. I could probably pick a moment and I'm probably fucking killing it. Little weird that Disney decided to make sure that uh, not only did they just completely drop this weird idea that Finn would ever love Rey, but also he very visibly and very awkwardly at the last minute uh, perfectly finds a former stormtrooper who talks about how she was basically a slave and they immediately fall in love and they have a, a kiss scene that's make sure that there's nothing offensive in this movie. Damn. This is a, uh, a device True. that allows you to bypass all Imperial security one time. However, and, and I want you to be clear about this. Oh my God, wait, I forgot. Oh my God, I forgot to mention something. Oh shit, I forgot the Chewy thing. Fuck. <laughs> this is the part where I literally forgot one of the funniest things in the movie because there was so much I wanted to talk about. to go back. Oh, we're gonna have to rewind. Oh, shit. Okay, hold on. Hold on, everybody. I'll, I'll do the Imperial Medallion thing. Um, the Imperial Medallion, okay? So, when they were on the Snake Planet, they couldn't escape on the Millennium Falcon. Instead, they had to climb into the 15-year-old crashed ship, which apparently flew perfectly fine, okay? 
I'm serious. They they jumped into a scrap vessel and it took off just fine. Not just that, but it just so happens that the Imperial vessel has a button or not the non-imperial vessel. This is not an imperial vessel. This is a a scrap vessel that was owned and operated by a random smuggler. The smuggler vessel has a button on it that opens up a slot that is literally the perfect size of an imperial medallion. So they introduce something that nobody has ever heard of and apparently every ship has a slot for an imperial medallion. I'm literally not kidding you. He pushes a button and a little disc tray with an imperial medallion shape has in it and he puts the medallion in. It makes, it. they just pulled it out of their ass at the last minute. And that was, that was done so that they could make sure that you knew that Poe wasn't gay. Okay. I forgot something, everybody. I forgot something really stupid, okay? Um, at, after they got out of the snake hole, okay? I'm very sorry. This is my apology. I'm issuing an apology, okay? Uh, I'm issuing an apology for this. After they got out of the snake hole, something incredibly stupid happens. They get out of the snake hole, they go to try and fly off the planet in the shitty scrap vessel that I just mentioned. And uh, off screen, even though Chewbacca is literally standing there with them, the pace of this movie is insane and stupid. You literally see Chewbacca and then they turn away to talk and then they look around and Chewbacca has been captured by uh, stormtroopers. I'm not kidding you, to the degree that the camera work is actually fucked up. Um, from the perspective, they do a shot, reverse shot, you should be able to see where Chewbacca is getting kidnapped, but you actually can't until they say Chewbacca's being kidnapped and then they show the shot again and all of a sudden there's two gigantic ships and a whole bunch of stormtroopers and Chewbacca is getting kidnapped. Like, they they actually fuck up the literal camera perspective of the scene. They're standing in a desert. There is no obscuring terrain whatsoever. So Chewie gets kidnapped. And then Kylo Ren shows up, and, and, and Rey and Kylo Ren have a tiny, tiny confrontation. And in this confrontation, Chewie gets blown up! No! No! They blew up Chewie! Oh no! The ship that Chewie's on goes boom! And all and, he, and he's obliterated, okay? There's nothing left to Chewie. His whole ship got completely blown up. Nothing. It's like literally completely destroyed. There's nothing left. It gets obliterated, okay? And they go, oh no, Chewie! And then they move to the next scene, okay? I'm not kidding you. They're like, no, Chewie, we have to move on. Chewie would have wanted us to go on. And they go, ah, 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 and they jump onto it and they fly away. And I'm not kidding you. They fly up into space and it cuts to Chewie being alive. God damn. God damn. That goddamn movie is so bad and my review of it is so fucking good. That you, what you just saw was me hopping around to random points in the video. And if you enjoyed that, this is the video for you to fucking watch. Go watch it. It got, it's criminally underrated, okay? Criminally underrated. Go watch my review. It's legendary, okay? Go watch it. Go, go put it on your watch later. This video, I was on fire. The jokes, oh my god. At the end, the jokes were flying out at a mile a minute, okay? This video only got 2.5 thousand views, and it's one of my funniest videos I've ever done. So then we have the continuation of the drama mama of the Illuminati thing. You guys remember the beef between Not So Erudite and President Sunday? Do you guys remember that shit? Wait, did I miss the first part of that? Where was the first part of that? That happened this year, didn't it? 
Where was the first part of that? I must have missed it. Did we not post the first part of that video for some reason? Or maybe that happened last year. Is that a last year thing? Ugh. I guess we didn't. I guess we never posted the first part of that. So I guess that was just the update, which was really cringe. Admittedly, this was drama content, but it was so funny. It was so ridiculous. Oh, the first, the first not so erudite President Sunday conflict. Oh yeah, that's right. Not so erudite asked us not to post, so we didn't. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. We didn't. That's fine. I'm still fine with that decision. This was drama anyway. This part did get pretty bad. It was very stupid, but also um it was a pretty it was it was it was a pretty weird and dirty situation. Oh my god. Moving on though. Moving on, though, Donald Trump and the boxes in the bathroom. That happened this year. This happened this year. The fucking Trump boxes in the bathroom. Oh, my God. The Trump self-incrimination speed run. I can't even believe it. Oh yeah, here's my uh, here's my full review of the Tears of the Kingdom. My reviews are criminally underrated. My reviews, oh damn. Oh my god, the alien poop magic conspiracy. One of the best the one of the best con uh, conspiracy mama videos ever done. The alien poo magic. So good. There's no way I can possibly explain that to people who haven't seen this video. So if you want to know what's the alien poop magic conspiracy, the poop lantern conspiracy, there you go. Here's the poop lantern one. Go ahead and click that link if you want to watch that one later. It's a very funny video. Also deranged. The poo magic was, I can't, there's no way I can describe it. It's an actually insane, an, an insane conspiracy theory we discovered. We do need, yeah, we need more Conspiracy Mama. You're right, we need to. Yep. For sure, 2024 is going to be more Conspiracy Mama. Hippie Punk says, you need a dedicated media review channel. That content can seriously stand on its own. That might be true, Hippie Punk, but I've heard it's not good to split, split channels until you reach a certain size. I've heard it's basically not worth it. Because I don't know if, like... I mean, it is true that perhaps a standalone channel would keep branding a little cleaner, but I just don't know if it's actually worth it until we reach a certain size. Like, I think, I think that people say that it's not worth splitting your channel viewership until you're, like, you know, in a couple hundreds of thousands of, view, of like, subscribers. So, I don't know. And also, I don't know, people do watch them. My core audience watches my reviews. Um, and they know how good they are. That's why my core audience watches my reviews. My core audience watches the reviews because they know how good they are, even though they're not clickbait. Like, the reviews are, like, they're really good. And they're really funny. But, yeah. True, Gayfesh, yeah. I need to do more of them. Um, yeah. Oh, the myhouse.wad playthrough. God, that was so good. Myhouse.wad is so fucking good. God, this was so much fun. I told you guys what happened when I played myhouse.wad, right? When I played myhouse.wad on stream, I got the worst Tetris. I got the worst Tetris syndrome I've ever had. If you don't know what Tetris Syndrome is, Tetris Syndrome is like a, it's like a weird phenomenon where if you play a, a video game 
uh, usually a, a game with particularly repetitive elements um, that sometimes your brain will basically get stuck on a loop fixating on aspects of the game and it can it can get so bad that it even interrupts your sleep and whatever because your brain basically just keeps thinking about it. Um, I got the worst Tetris syndrome. I think I've al almost the worst I've ever had in my entire life from myhouse.wad. Oh God, it's so bad. I played it and um, and it was just like, I couldn't sleep. It, I, oh my God, I, I was tossing and turning. And every time I closed my eyes, my brain was just ro roaming around those concrete halls again. Uh, it, was, it was a genuine nightmare. I felt so fucking horrible. Oh God, it was terrible. I get that sometimes after work. Yeah, it happens for a lot of things. Yeah, it's like you get the visuals in your mind even when you close your eyes. So fucked up. But still, that just kind of proves how effective myhouse.wad was. A waking nightmare. Yeah, it is a waking nightmare. And the worst part is that these lights, I that night I left these lights on. So there was just red light pouring out of my office into the hallway and leaking into the bedroom. Terrible decision. I don't know why I didn't, it was one of those times where I don't know why I didn't think to get up and turn them off, but I was just out of it. I actually, I know why I didn't think up to get, I didn't think to get up and turn them off. And that's because if you'll remember at the end of this stream, I was complaining about having a splitting headache. That's the real reason. The real reason was because I had a horrible fucking headache. So I was sitting in bed with the worst myhouse.wad Tetris syndrome. And there was fucking red light pouring in the door. Just terrible, terrible, terrible. God, it was terrible. But it was awesome. And it proves how excellent this game is. It's spooky doggy. Huh. Okay. All right, then. Spooky doggy. Oh, uh, remember the bathroom we area? We needed. Oh! Oh man, that's fucked up. I scared myself just now! Oh my god! Oh, I fucking- I fucking scared myself just now! <laughs> god damn it! Oh shit, now our heart rate is going. Oh. I knew it was gonna do this. Okay, here's a hint, everybody. F fun fact, anytime there's a bathroom in a horror game, they will always do a jump scare. It is the rule of every fucking, uh, every fucking horror game. It's every time I knew it was coming and I, they still got a jump scare on me. Always. It's just I, I double knew it was coming. I fucking double knew it was coming. I played it and I remembered this part happening and even watching it just now, I jump scared myself. Fucking bullshit. Anyway, go play myhouse.wad. It's fucking incredible. Oh, we're getting into some golden stuff. We're getting into some golden stuff. You ready to see some a golden era of Demon Mama content? That's right. The future is here. I got the Apple Vision Pro VR. And then the Michael Knowles Medieval Times one.
Good ASMR. Dr. Doofenshmirtz? No, it's the goblins from WoW. You'll have to go watch the rest of the video to go find out. It does kind of sound like Dr. Doofenshmirtz. You're not wrong. It does kind of sound like him. Everybody getting mad? Guess what, bitch? I have a video for that. Why I never talk about ASMR. You people are so weak. You know what I feel like? You want to know who I feel like whenever I see people in chat fucking whining? This guy right here. Hold on. Hold on. You want to know who I fucking feel like? Every single, every single goddamn time. Every time this topic comes up, this is who I feel like right here. Right there. This is me. I just immediately transform into fucking Omni-Man. I'm just like, you disgust me. And I listen to ASMR on full blast, and you all are like, I, t I play a 10 second bit, and half of you are crying. I'm just like, look at what they need. Look at what they need to mimic a fraction of our power. I could do so much worse, El Rose. You have no idea. You have no idea what power I'm concealing from you right now. If I wanted to, I know in this very moment the exact type of videos. I know the specific links to the specific ASMR videos that would destroy your goddamn soul. Don't test me. Don't fucking test me. Once again, it's happening again. It's fucking happening right now. This is me right now. Wrong, wrong swarm of rats, only for the weak. Okay, fine. I'm gonna hit you guys with it. It's fine. Bet you won't do it? I'll hit you right now with one of my favorite videos. Hold on, I'm gonna hit you with one of the best, and it'll destroy your goddamn minds. Hold on, hold on. Yep, here we fucking go. This is the one. Ah, beautiful. I wish I could have been more. I definitely eat too much of this. I might end up getting depression. At least that's what the doctor told me. Oh, oh, yeah, it's pretty good, right? No, this is, the, look, look, there's the appreciators in chat. So good, by the way. So are we in the noodles? No, the, the it's, it's, this, I'll try and explain it. This is a primarily visual triggers ASMR. First of all, channel is trigger happy ASMR, one of the legends, okay? This is a visual trigger and of course, audio trigger. The premise is a bit of a goofy premise. The idea is that he is eating negative thought noodles, noodles of negative thought out of your mind. Um, very, very excellent video. Unironically, no jokes, one of my favorite uh, ASMR videos of all time. This is one of them that I've listened to this video probably 20 times, love it. Um, actually so good. Um, and
there are so many people angry in the YouTube chat right now. It's actually incredible. Somebody, oh, this is a great one. Says someone who was jump scared by a Doom mod a couple of minutes ago. Being jump scared equals whining incessantly in chat because of a 10 seconds of a sound you don't like? I'm fucking bringing it back. I'm fucking bringing it back. Omni-Man was fucking right. Omni-Man was fucking right. Weak. Weak. You people are weak. And this is why you don't get anything nice. Because you fucking people, you fucking viewers out there, you fucking viewers out there can't tolerate anything out of your comfort zone for even 10 seconds without crying. It's like, oh, no wonder you get fed fucking pablum. No wonder the only movies you get that get made anymore is fucking Marvel garbage. Where, where the, the audio has to be a perfectly equivalent tone the entire movie. Jesus fucking Christ. Also, yes, Chariot, I was joking. The real truth is that's not even the weirdest thing. You guys want to see the fucking weirdest shit ever? Hold on. I'll find you the weirdest ASMR ever. Hold on a second. We're going there. That's it. I'll show you. You want me to flex? I'll flex. You thought that I was, pr I was pretending, okay? I was fucking joking. Hold on. Let's see. What's the one? Hmm... Which one should I do? Oh man, there's so many good ones. Okay, that one's actually really funny. That one's the Oblivion ASMR one. That one's really good. That one's just legitimately funny though. Hold on, let me get it. I got my ASMR playlist right here. I'll hit you with some fucking weird ones. Now wait, should I do the what weird ones that I don't like? The ones that even I don't like? Or should I do the weird ones that I do like? That's the real question. Oh man, where's the one? <gasps> Hold on. Oh man, I know the one. Hold on. I I know the one. Oh, I love that one, Chariot. I know I I well, okay, I don't know for sure if that's the one that I like. Ah, uh, here we go. This is the one. Un I, okay, this is the one of the weirdest ones that I absolutely enjoy. I actually do enjoy this one, and it's definitely one of the weirdest ones. Here we go. You guys ready? You guys are going to get so mad about this. Actually, we've lost 50 viewers since I started this. Weak. Weak. Power. <sighs> I love this guy. He's got a great sense of humor. Straight up. Yeah, Tarar, Tarar is amazing. This guy's channel is Tarar Adegelo. He does lots of very goofy and silly. Um, if you go to his channel, you'll see he does a lot of goofy and silly stuff. He also does a lot of um, really heartfelt stuff. But he also does weird stuff from time to time. He's got all kinds of ones. Now, you want to hear one I don't like? Unironically, though, here's one I don't like. Hold on. Here's one I don't like. Okay? Oh, God. This might be giga cringe. It's probably giga cringe. This is the type I don't like. Okay? This is the type I unironically don't like. <laughs> told you. I told you this is the stuff I don't like. But you didn't see me fucking have a meltdown, did you? I just turned it the fuck off. Oh, Dr. T is amazing, Swarm of Rats. Bad audio quality. That's another thing. The anime ones are the worst. Like, I know that uh, I'm... It's not actually the sounds alone that are dislikable. 
it's the um it's the it's the there's so much wrong with it the anime ones are so lazy their audio is always fucked up it's fucked up okay it's just fucked up all right the goblin asmr was way better There's so many, by the way. The anime ASMR is out of control. Okay, but here's one that is really cute. Okay, ready? The ones that people are upset about are misophonia triggers. You want to know what I don't like? Fucking, uh, uh, fucking scratches on, on a fucking... A uh, 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 chalkboard. But if I'm watching a movie and there's a fucking chalkboard scratch in the middle of the movie, you know what I do? I look at it and I go, there's probably a reason the chalkboard scratch is in the middle of the movie. Drives me fucking crazy. And I go, huh, I wonder what the purpose of the chalkboard scratch was. Well, I guess I'll watch the rest of the movie. I don't fucking stop the movie and go, oh my god, it's over for me. Ah! And then start furiously typing out comments online. Oh my god, I can't believe you'd include a fucking chalkboard scratch in this movie. That makes me crazy. Don't you know that it bothers my fucking ears? I'm so sorry. I really can't handle this. I don't like it when I hear noises that I don't like. It really drives me crazy. Listening to noises that I don't like is really annoying and I shouldn't have to do it ever. I really don't like you for doing this. I'm going to unsubscribe right now. By the way, that's what I typed out. It's so funny because this, all of this happening right now, it's so funny. This, the joke about the ASMR in the Goblin video, which was less than 30 seconds, okay? Not two video, three videos later, why I never talk about ASMR. And of course, since I did the video, why I never talk about ASMR, I have committed to talking about ASMR way more frequently. Autism mama? No, I'm so sorry. I know so many fucking autists. I, you guys watched me do the fucking autism test four times on stream because I kept bungling the end result of the autism test. You guys can't roll out the autism excuse. You can't. Autists still have to exist in a world where sometimes you hear a sound you don't like and it's okay. You don't have to have a meltdown. There's all kinds of things. It's not like I'm fucking strapping a car battery to you and electrocuting you. It's just a sound. The fact that I played 30 seconds and the entire chat erupted into people fucking crying just goes to, it's, it's, it's pathetic. It's genuinely pathetic. And it's performative too. That's the worst part. Because I know for a fact that the vast majority of you aren't actually that bothered by it. You just, you just need to know, you need other people to know that you think mouth sounds are gross because you don't want to be considered one of those people who likes them. And it might be true that you don't like them, but you're fucking hamming it up. I know a hammer when I see one, okay? I know a fucking hammer. True, and also the giant amount of ASMR fucking... A autistic ASMR lovers and art autistic ASMR creators. True, Chariot. Thank you. See, Chariot of all people knows this the most because Chariot has to deal with, like, listening to, uh, uh, Chariot, like, does reviews of conservative media reviews, and conservative media reviews are just, like, the maximalized version of this. Their entire view on media is basically, I saw something and it made me feel weird and now I'm angry about it. 
instead of like interrogating it or just moving on with their life, they spend the rest of their lives coming up with like the most insane reasons to basically be like, I saw something that was weird and it made me feel kind of weird in a movie and now I'm really mad about it. Demon Mama spitting, I know. Sometimes literally. I am uncomfortable when we are not about me. I have very broad ASMR tastes, okay? I like a lot of ASMR. I like weird ASMR. I like chill, regular ASMR. I like the easy ASMR. I love it. I'm basically like, you know the guy who wrote that, that thing where he's like the girls animation? You know the guy who got uh, fucking ran off the internet? I'm like that, but with ASMR. I'm like, I like the crinkly stuff. I like the, the the squeakly stuff. I like the squishy stuff. I like the bouncy stuff. That's me. I love a lots of ASMR, okay? There are sounds I really don't like, okay? Here's one. I can show you another one that I actually hate, okay? Ready? Oh, you guys are going to lose your shit when I play this one because this one will drive people crazy. Um... Um, hold on. Look at this. Oh man, this would drive people fucking insane. Okay, watch this. Look, I'll even just show you it. Look at this. This one where they use the tools, they use like little scratchy tools on the microphone. This is one right here. He uses a dental tool on the microphone. This is one, this one bothers me. Like it actually, I don't like it. I turn it off. But you want to know what I don't do? This video has 987,000 likes and it's somebody scratching a microphone with a dental pick. Here, I'll play it. Don't like that. Don't like that one bit. Don't like it one bit. Don't like that one bit. Don't like any of this. All right? Ow. There's ones where people will do the, the they'll do the, they'll do the dental pick and they'll go bing, bing, bing. Gay fish likes this one. Yeah, I figured a lot of people, there's, and guess what? 987,000 people like this video. And guess what? I actively hate it. I'm not going to lie. The sound in this video drives me crazy. The The metal pick on the metal grate of the microphone actually provokes, like, it's very, very close to a scratching on chalkboard. And guess what? I've never gone and written an angry fucking comment on this video because guess what? This video is for the 987,000 people who did like this video. Okay? That's what this video is for. Wow. 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 And guess what? Sometimes there's an ASMR video that has picking stuff in it. And if I don't like that part, I just press the button on my, on my computer to skip 20 seconds into the future when they're doing another sound. And I enjoy the rest of the video that I was having a great time with because that one particular part just isn't for me. It's that, it really is that simple. It really is that simple. That one's way better than the slurping noises. See, that sounds crazy to me. To me, on the inside, I'm like, how can you enjoy the rough sound of a dental pick on metal over the sound of someone like making no like like kissing or licking your ear? Like, how can you? Doesn't make any sense to my mind. But I recognize that you have the right to enjoy that. And a lot of people do. In fact, arguably, the uh, the, 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 the type, the, the type that I say I don't like is probably more popular overall than the types that I like. 
because wet sounds are gross? See, ain't that a matter of perspective? Wet sounds aren't necessarily gross. You want to know? Oh, you want to know what? You guys ever seen that part of? You, you ever seen the Lynch Dune movie? Anybody here? Raise your hand if you've seen the uh, Lynch Dune movie. There's a scene in the Lynch Dune movie where, um, where uh, uh, the Duke Atreides uses a poison tooth to try and kill Baron Harkonnen. And afterwards, Baron Harkonnen is ripping the skin off of his face with little hooks. Like, and it's like, ah, and it's all like, all blurry and weird. And his, his the hooks are being used to like peel pieces of, that's what the, that's the, the, the image that goes in my mind when I see people using those little hooks. The like hooks scratching on bone and on teeth. But guess what? To me, that's a gross sound. But to other people, different sounds might be gross. Magical. It's a genuine problem, and it feels like you're just making fun of people who have misophonia. I get it's my job to separate myself from those sounds, but you still seem really dismissive. Everyone has some level of misophonia. Everyone does. It's actually to the degree that there are certain sounds that are so unlikable that they're almost universally disliked. Nails on a chalkboard is shorthand because it actually makes people's teeth feel bad. Like, I'm one of those people. But I also recognize that it's... This isn't me. The whole reason I'm going on this rant is because I played 30 seconds of a funny clip about where I did Goblin ASMR as a bit. And I'm literally was making fun. I was, I was poking fun at myself by being a goofball and putting on silly goggles and pretending that I was listening to Goblin porn ASMR. And people in the chats lost their fucking minds. And they did it back then, too. If you go watch the chat back then, there's a reason why I made a video called Hostility to ASMR after that. Because people don't know how to fucking self-regulate. People get so defensive about it every time. And the reason why I poke some fun at that idea is because I'm fucking tired of it. I'm tired of it. People are always weird about it. They're weird about it every single time. I should get an ASMR soundboard to punish my audience. I try not to be too uh, spiteful, but you want to know what this does feel like, though? This is the type of stuff. Um, this type of thing is like... Um, it, it, it literally, it reminds me of like, um, again, it's so performative. That's what really gets to me. And it reminds me of like, um, it reminds me of like when, uh, horror filmmakers put extra gore in their movies, uh, to piss, to like piss people off. You know what I mean? It's like a, a, an old school horror tradition to go just one step further because people complain about the movie. They make a horror movie or a slasher movie, a gory, bloody mess, and then people will go to the movie theater, watch a horror movie, a gory, bloody mess, and then they'll go online and be like, actually, it was really disgusting how much gore was on there. It really bothered me and upset me. How satanic and upsetting. It really does speak to the degradation of society. That's what, I, that's what it feels like. It reminds me of that. So whenever this happens and people react, like overreact, performatively overreact to me playing 20 seconds of like an ear eating sound, uh, it makes me just want to do it more, which is why we've had a stun lock, uh, an angry stun lock for 20 minutes. By the way, we've gained back like 20, 20 viewers. <laughs> I'm so powerful. Alexi with the $5, this is for chat. Oh, I love this one! The caring and supportive Funky Kong gives you a ride home from the airport! Legendary! Legendary, Alexi! 
Gayfesh says, when I saw Saw X, I almost walked out. It is not the movie for me, but I decided to step outside myself and watch it and review it from the perspective of someone who does like that kind of movie. Movie, And it's the review I'm most proud of. Yeah, see? Powerful. Powerful move. A genuinely powerful move which that I respect a lot. Mix Dizzy says, have you ever heard of the, the fandom concept of Dead Dove Do Not Eat? It's riffing on a scene from a comedy. I know the series. It's from uh, Arrested Development. Uh, it's it's a riffing on the scene for a way that people refuse to not interact with media that triggers them if it upsets them. Yeah, it, it's something people do. I've just found that particularly for ASMR, there is a performative act, um, um, a performative aspect. There's just a performative aspect. Uh, to it that really bothers me um, where it's just it is and it's just like oh I can't believe it guys can't you see I can't believe it over here pyro guy says but the difference is when you go to a film like that you know what you're getting into when you watch a stream like this it's completely unexpected no it isn't my video about ASMR was from six months ago. I'm a variety streamer. I literally talk about how much I like ASMR all the time. And guess what? Sometimes you go to a movie. If you went to the, if you went to any David Lynch film, basically every David Lynch film has some fucked up shit in it. If you watched a trailer for a David Lynch film, you might not know that there's some weird fucked up shit in it. And you go and watch the movie and you're going to get upset about it because you didn't expect it. What, do you want to have the whole movie play for you in the in the waiting room so you can know what to expect? That's not how life works. Life is full of surprises. It's a grab bag. And there are limits, obviously. Like, I'm not fucking... It's not like I'm sitting here fucking tasing you with a taser. I played... 30 fucking seconds of a sound that some people don't like that much. I know, Cherry. It's fucking ridiculous. Nerodia says, I think there may well be some intersection between performative ASMR hate and prudishness. It reminds me of a lot of the performative reaction to sex in mainstream movies. Yes, it does. Do you guys remember on Twitter when there were like a bunch of like Zoomer, um, Zoomer types being like, I just, sex scenes in movies are just so fucking unnecessary, guys. Like, I just, I didn't go there to watch a movie with my family and see a sex scene. Like, awkward. That's just so fucking weird. It reminds me of that. It's like, who cares? Who asked? Who fucking gives a shit? Nobody fucking asked you. I hate to tell you this, but no, I, I shouldn't be. No, I don't want to be mean. Real life is full of unexpected things, okay? Obviously, there are limits. I'm not telling you that we should just, that, that I should be able to, like, flash gore on the screen. But come on. The fact that I, that, that it's being compared to that, that it's even getting to that point is kind of ridiculous, don't you think? Yes, that's the exact one. Dead dove, do not eat. And then they open it up and then he says, I don't know what I was expecting. Yeah. Did she just do the sassy white girl voice? Yeah, I can break it out if I need to. I can fucking break it out if I need to. Anyway, I've ranted about this for long enough. Man, this is going to be the like... But this is a summation of the year, isn't it? The, ri the highs and the lows, the rants and the raging. It's a perfect summer summary of the year. We got to get back. Did you know that we were looking through my content before I got derailed? That's true, McStizzy. That's true. SpongeBob video. That was just a that was just a SpongeBob praise video. Unironic SpongeBob praise. Oh, the this is the this is the knife sorcery video, which I recorded last year but posted this year. Damn, killer one. The spirit knife massage. Incredible. I discovered an insane healing griff, the spirit knife massage.
the the the, the Colleen Ballinger Miranda sings the uh, drama mama, insane, insane drama. The new channel trailer, amazing. The first Kit Boga react. All the conversations from the first Signal Night. The Diablo 4 review. Diablo 4 has just gotten worse over time. The 4th of July rant. And here was my other mistake of the year. Okay, not truly a mistake, but something I still feel slightly bad about. Not the only Kit Boga react. I have two Kit Boga reacts. There's two. It's so bad. D4 is such a bungle. It's not as bad as of a bungle as D3. It was at least playable at launch, but they just have completely dropped the ball on it. The Kid Boga reacts were great. I'm proud of the Kid Boga reacts. And then we have this. My biggest mistake of the year. Reacting to the foreign man in a foreign land noodle discourse video. Genuinely, my biggest mistake of the year, which I can own up to. That's right. You saw it here. You heard it here. Me, live on stream, owning up to a mistake. That's right. You witnessed it here, folks. You can never say, well, I do that all the time, to be completely honest. It's actually crazy. Not to, you know, whatever. I don't give a shit. It's the end of 2023. This has been a brutal year. I'm going to fucking, I'm going to fucking be honest even if it makes me sound like a total egomaniac. It's actually crazy how since I joined this space, in the four years that I've joined this space, I I have been somebody who has repeatedly been able to acknowledge and admit when I was wrong, almost to a fault. I have gone to lengths to to be charitable to people who were not charitable to me, and I don't get any fucking credit for it. Well, you guys give me credit for it, which is why I like you all. Um, remember when I did Demon Mama versus Demon Mama? Do you guys remember that? That was an old one. I never did that again. You want to know why I never did that again, even though I feel proud of doing it? Um, the Demon Mama versus Demon Mama stream, which was, uh, my attempt to, my attempt to prove to the world uh, that their conception of me as, like, somebody who couldn't take any feedback was totally wrong. Um, I did the Demon Mama versus Demon Mama where I went back and reviewed all of my own fucking shit. It was a massive effort. It was, like, a 10-hour stream of me going and reviewing my stuff and self-critiquing. Uh, and then after that, I did a open call-in critique stream where people could call in and critique me on things, and I would just hear them out. And none of it fucking mattered. Even though I sat there and listened to people critique me and in good faith, and some of them said some fucking ridiculous bullshit about me, I still heard them out. And none of it fucking mattered. At the end of the day, the narrative was exactly the same. They still had their preconceptions about me. They stood by their preconceptions about me. They didn't, and even the ones, even the people who engaged in that fucking stream still went on to continually narrativize as if I never did a incredibly, like, and people will be like, oh, you did a stream about self-critique? You guys have never done that. I, I, I call bluff on that. Anybody, no, I don't know anybody who's ever sat down for 10 hours and let random people on the internet say things about them and give their opinion. I don't know anyone. I've never met a single fucking person who's ever sat down and just done a, a performance art where you let people who have problems with you come and tell you, tell them, tell, tell them your, tell you their problems. Jesus Christ, I stumbled over that. Tell you their problems with you for 10 hours and just take it on the chin.
And anybody who thinks that that was like me try, people started to say that I was being performative and whatever. I'm like, do it yourself then. Let's see you do it. Let's see you fucking put yourself out there when you already have tons of people hating you. Let's see you do it. Let's see you fucking stand up there and let people throw fucking tomatoes at you all day and see if your ego can handle it, you fucks. But anyway, all of this is a, is a ramble off of me owning up to the fact that this was a mistake. It got a lot of views. This video got 32,000 views reacting to the foreign man in a foreign land video. And I, 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 I still think it was a mistake. It was a very successful video, but it brings me no pride when I look at it. When I look at that video, it makes me feel a uh, disappointment in myself. And I never want to feel that when I look at a video. Um... I reacted to that video because I felt like I heard, I had heard, I had seen people talking about it for days. Like, watch, if you even go to the beginning of the video, you'll hear, oh shit, I did it again. I forgot to right click. God fucking damn it. I hate that when I do that. Where is it here? Ah, oh, here it is. If you even go into this video, you're going to hear me say this right at the beginning. Like, we are going to be talking about some drama. Now, many of you know that I do a series called Drama Mama. If you've never seen it, you should check it out. Go onto my channel, search Drama Mama, and you'll find it. This is not a Drama Mama, although I think you will enjoy my Drama Mamas. My Drama Mama videos are where I do a whole bunch of research and uh, I do a deep dive investigation into um, usually some sort of internet or pop culture blow up and I try to make sense for people who might not understand what the heck's going on. Recently, we've covered uh, the Miranda Singh situation. We've covered the Illuminati situation. But this, again, is not a drama mama. Today, it's just a drama stream. I am not doing any research for today. Uh, however, I am still going to hopefully be able to say something valuable to all of you. And hopefully we'll have a good time while doing it. Um, today we are going to be talking about debate bros versus video essayists, which is a very strange topic. I haven't talked about this thing in a really long time. However, despite me not talking about it, it has nonetheless been an issue that continually crops up. In this bubbling swamp that we call uh, the internet, there are various circles and cliques and spaces that people tend to gravitate towards. And a lot of them are very loosely defined. And uh, in those uh, uh, in those subgroups, there are also groups of friends, and there are people who associate with one another, people who collaborate with one another, and little cliques and stuff like that. And recently, and by recently, I mean like the last like year, mostly. It's been like a year, year and a half. There has been uh, probably longer than that that, that, the, that the, the, the conflict has been bubbling up, but it's gotten really bad in the last year and a half. There has been this weird schism between video essayists and debate bros. And a lot of times it centers around a few key figures uh two i'm gonna hop ahead here because there's a thing that i think i say right here in a little bit let me see uh struggle uh against a very severe campaign of online harassment also been critical of a lot of uh there is a sort of small click of people who call themselves video essayists uh, sometimes they refer to themselves as bread tube, even though I don't actually think that's accurate at all. Um, the self-identification was no organization. Find. It was a consumer label. And an, an incomprehensible internet process of bread I don't refer to myself as a part of bread tube. I never have. But people have actually said that I'm a part of bread tube, even though I don't even do video. Somewhere in this beginning part, I know that I say this because I rewatched this video. Whether or not they self-identify the organization, and nonetheless, a schism 
is referenced frequently. And most of the people who are viewing Oh, the I did a long preamble for this. That's right. The I show, know it's somewhere When I here. say the debate bro versus video essayist um, schism, you know what I'm talking about simply by observing it in action. Lately, there has been a number of videos um, mostly, I go. would, I will say predominantly from the video essayist side of this whole thing that attempt to talk about the issue, that attempt to, um, explain it. And this is the we've watched a couple of. of them here on this stream, and I haven't had very good opinions about most of them. Uh, in fact, most of the videos that have that I've watched on this stream that talk about the bait bros or that attempt to narrativize the the history of this conflict, I feel are very, very bad. They're very biased. They're under uh, they're they're undersighted. They're weak as video essays, not just as general content. I find them to be not actually very accurate and generally very slanted. Um, and recently there's been a, a new outcropping of this. There's been a another series of, vi of videos that have come out. Some of them I have refused to engage with because I simply thought yeah, that they the were part. too baity. They were so very obviously like designed to try and bait um, reactions and whatever that I just didn't feel it was worthwhile to spend time on it. However, a video uh, has recently dropped that despite me literally being on a short, a short hiatus, you could explain. I've been away for about a week and uh, after I did a really long stream that had nothing to do with any of this, I've been binging TV and not spending much time online. I have nonetheless seen so much about this latest video. Bam, right there. That's the part that I was looking for. Um, when I made this video, that's the reason right there. I, I remembered that I had said it pretty early. It was 10 minutes into the video, still pretty early in a video for me. And it was, um, and, and I wanted to, the reason I'm even saying this is because I want to explain why um, I feel so negatively about this video. Um, I got mad, I got mad and, and I let my, my frustration and anger guide me to make content that I don't feel like, that I don't love. And by the way, I should be a hundred percent clear here. My reaction to this video is fine. Um, I've watched it back. I got very angry at parts of it. Um, and I think that the arguments that I made during it um, were valid. Um, but it doesn't fucking matter. It doesn't fucking matter at all. I got angry for no fucking reason. Um, because it's just a fucking stupid waste of time. And afterwards, after I reacted to this video, the Soul Bunny debate happened. Immediately after I reacted to this video... I had the debate with Soul Bunny. A debate in which I attempted to engage in absolutely as good faith as possible, and it did not fucking matter at all. The entire time was just a giant slurry of dishonesty. I tried to engage in good faith, and uh, it was just endless dis dishonesty. I was getting lied to my face, and in the result of that, it ended up basically perpetuating hurt against other people. Not from what I did, but from the fact that as a result of my reaction to the foreign man video, it opened the door for the conversation with Soul Bunny, which progressed naturally from that point. But the fact of the matter is I never should have done the fucking react in the first place. I, 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 I think that my... I think that I handled the debate well. I think I handled the react well. And of course, obviously, I think that the conversation with Shark went very, very well. It was a it was a good conversation. Talking with Shark was a good and I even think to some degree valuable conversation. I quite liked talking to Shark. However, 
All of it is downstream from me getting mad about everybody filling my fucking Discord, filling my fucking social media stream, filling my YouTube with the foreign man video. And I reacted to it. And looking back on it, I see that video and all I feel is just anger and disappointment. I don't look at this video and go, damn, I did a good job. I wish I could because I have watched him. I know that I, I know that I did fine in the debate. I know that I was extra fair. I know that I was very diplomatic. I know that a lot of people appreciated the soul bunny conversation because it, um, because it kind of proved just how dishonest she was willing to be even to somebody who gave her a, a ton of, of, of leeway. And, and, and of course she could barely, she could barely keep herself under control and even minor pushback. She got very agitated at, um, and my conversation with shark was fine, but the entire loop of it all was, all of it was just meaningless. It, it, not, none of it was, I just, I just, I don't feel like I created anything out of it. It all, and it felt bad. It all felt horrible. From the moment I started reacting to the foreign man video, all the way through the soul bunny debate, all the way to the end of the shark shark conversation. And that's not me saying that me talking with shark felt bad. It was, I felt bad about it because I had found myself embroiled in a drama where shark was hurt by a lot of the shit that went down in this drama. And I didn't like that I had inserted myself in there at all. And at the end of the day, I gained nothing from it. Next to nothing. Nobody stuck around. Well, some people did, I guess. I, somebody mentioned that they, they first saw this video. So obviously some people stuck around. But by and large, this video did not grow my channel. It wasn't some big victory. It wasn't some major moment where I like, unlike the Illuminati stuff, where the Illuminati stuff was a measured documenting of what actually happened in a very serious situation um that grew my channel a lot it was beneficial Pe it grew my channel because i was providing something of value not because i was just touching on a uh you know busy on like a electrified rail of drama it was me creating a new flow with something that i decided to do to document everything in order in time so that people could understand it at 5 duty Derek says, the original Foreign Man video was awful, but your coverage was fine and as good of a reaction as could possibly have been made. I still remember working out on my porch while watching that on my phone. Yeah, I think that, like, if you go watch that video, I think it was funny. I think that, um, like, to a certain degree, I think I was, uh, like, I was making jokes. It was high quality um, as far as, like, it was a video that I made, but I didn't feel good about it on a channel philosophy level. I don't feel it reflects where I want to be now. And that's why I say it's a mistake that I don't feel much pride for. It's really complicated and I don't think I'm wording myself very well. But, yeah. Sparkly Void with the three gifted tier one subs. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for supporting the show, Sparkly Void. Bye-bye 2023 and bye-bye white names. Thanks for the great content, Demon Mama. Thank you. Gayfesh says, there's a streamer I saw who said that this month was their best month ever in terms of viewership, but their entire month has been drama. And I'm like, sustaining that will destroy you eventually. It's not sustainable. It is not, it is simply not sustainable. People believe that they can keep shoveling the drama in, but no one can. It doesn't work. There are the only people who can sustain drama content long term, either, um, uh, 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 are, 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 there's basically only one type who can actually sustain it long term and that is Keemstar somebody who is willing to en en engage to a degree in making the drama 
that they be get that they are like constantly causing it that they are the drama creator and that type of person look like if that's your 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 game i think it's like more like a morally repugnant thing to do so but it's not even people like i don't even think turkey tom is a good example because these people have only been around a short time and a ton of them have disappeared like drama channels come and go like flashes in the pan they ri they rise to to lots of views and then they collapse. It, they just come and go. Next year you won't remember any of the names in the drama space. It's just just how it goes. I don't know why that is, a Alex Kish. I have no idea why you wouldn't get the notifications. That's very weird. And nobody really knows who these people are outside of the drama world. Um, yeah. Anyway, all of that was to address what you're saying, Gay Fesh. It's true. It will destroy you. It's totally unsustainable. Chariot says, something about a lot of drama creators that I've noticed is that when business is slow, they have to become the drama. And do that, and due to that, over time, their moralizing in their commentaries completely falls flat because of how they're increasing the ob increasingly the object of the content. Yes. Um, there's another effect. Um, which is basically, and it's tied to what you're saying, which is the ripped pants problem. There's an episode of SpongeBob called Ripped Pants. And in that, in this episode of SpongeBob, SpongeBob goes onto the beach and he tries to pick something up off the beach. And when he bends over, his pants rip open and everybody laughs, right? And, and he goes, and then, and the first time it happens, everybody's laughing. And he's like, oh my god, that's great. So then he tries to do it again. Oops, I ripped my pants. And this time he rips his pants intentionally, and everybody laughs. And the third time, he still gets a few chuckles out of people. He rips them again. And eventually, it gets to the point where nobody's laughing anymore. But he's ripping his pants in more and more ways and more and more frequently. Basically, to the point where he's literally ripping his pants every every moment of every day, trying to get somebody to laugh at the ripped pants. Sorry, there's this little fruit fly that buzzes around me and it's driving me crazy. Um, ADHD moment. And the ripped pants problem is like, a lot of people would immediately go, oh, you mean like a lol cow? But it's not just a lol cow problem. It's this need to uh, to try and catch lightning in a bottle again and again with drama. It's the need to rip your pants to make people laugh. And it ties in directly to what you're talking about there, Cherry. Xerox says the best case scenario for most drama streamers is that they eventually realize they need to at least diversify their content, if not leave the drama sphere entirely. Most can't do that, though, because most of them don't actually know at the they, they've spent their time making low effort drama farming content and they don't actually know how to do it anymore and at the worst case you end up in a situation like a lol cow situation where somebody is basically intentionally debasing themselves for attention um but most people fall into the quasi zone the ripped pants area where they need to have uh, they need to come up with a new way to rip their pants so that people will laugh and click on their videos and eventually it just gets stale and then their channel collapses. It's a really sad cycle to witness. And also, of course, uh, on, uh, you know, unlike in the SpongeBob episode, uh, you know, the SpongeBob episode was mostly about like, you know, uh, you shouldn't just debase yourself for a quick laugh. Um, but the other side of it is that it eventually encourages the most fucking toxic and pathetic audiences to form ever audiences that have no attention span audiences that have no attachment or depth to anybody and i know i just did a video ranting about drama it's been something that's been on my mind a lot but it's how i feel so yeah yep yeah it just uh i don't know I've seen it so much in four years of my show going forward and my show growing and getting stronger and building a um, and building content. It is such a it is such a deadly cycle. It's such a deadly cycle.
Thank you, Bizadu. I mean, look, look, I mean, I'm serious. The video did do good. My, my, both, all of these videos did good. All of these drama related videos did very well. I just, it makes me feel bad. I, I would rather do, like, I would rather make, look at the video after it. Mama discovers insane nightmare house, the dark souls of floor plans. Now this was an older video that we decided to post. Um, or actually, no, look, even a better example is this one up here. So here's this drama. Here's a drama mama investigation about the discrimination at cruel and cruelty at Bethesda. Only 3.3 thousand people actually watched this video, which was a situation of legitimately disgusting behavior towards a trans person at, at, at a studio that supposedly prides itself on being, um, you know, uh, uh, super progressive and whatever. Um, and nobody watched that shit, but I feel so much better about that video. I feel so much better about this than any of this. And look at this 10 times the amount of views I got from this, the foreign man react something that you have to learn as a YouTuber. And I mean this, and this is advice, I guess out there is that, um, it really numbers really aren't everything. This, the, the, YouTube will tell you that 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 the numbers are everything. YouTube will do everything in its power to pressure you that those numbers are everything, but they literally aren't. YouTube is actually incorrect. They think that's what makes that's what makes things good on their platform, but it's not, and it actually kills their platform in the long run. What matters is stuff that people will come back to, stuff that people will remember and appreciate, stuff that will last. True, Chariot. That's also true. Anyway, that was a really long rant to talk about what I consider to be one of my biggest mistakes of the year. And again, it has nothing to do with how I performed, has nothing to do with the jokes, has nothing to do with my pacing. I don't think the videos were like low quality. I just don't think that they were good. It's really hard for me to figure out how to word it, but I don't like doing this. And in 2024, I will be doing everything in my power to avoid this type of stuff massively, like, like ridiculously. So just is not something I want to make anymore ever again. Remember, hey, 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 in other news, remember that time when, uh, remember that time when Ron DeSantis did a, uh, uh, you know, Ron DeSantis' campaign team promoted a, uh, a meme, a meme with Nazi imagery in it? You remember that? You remember fucking that? God damn. That was back when Ron DeSantis had any numbers in the polls. He doesn't even exist anymore. He doesn't even exist. Hey, here was the here was the here was when we talked about the huge trans health victory in Oregon with Rapti. That was fucking incredible. <laughs> Grime Dango, perfect timing. <laughs> Grime Dango says, "We do it a year in review. Is it really 2023? If you didn't rip your pants, yeah, it was just we were just talking about that." <laughs> Good to see you, Grime Dango. Wonderful to see you, in fact. 85D2D Derek with the $5 says, The Bethesda thing remind me. I've been going tra I've been going going crazy trying to find your gem of a react to the fucking pronouns. I just want to say wait, Yeah, where is my re I did react to this. Where where is it from? That's from the live wait, hold on. Hold on a second. Wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Hold on, it's definitely in here. It's on my lives. I don't think we posted it as a video, but I definitely did. Hold on. The fucking pronouns thing. Hmm. Hmm.
Where was it? Oh, I think it was here. I think I found it. Yep, I think I found it. Who's ready for some mother fucking politics? Who's ready? Oh. No, but we gotta put the devil tits away. We gotta put the devil cock away. We gotta put the robot talk away. We gotta put the gay elves away for just a minute. But not for very long. Because I gotta talk about politics with you. Who wants to talk about fucking politics? I think All it's right. here. I can see that the chat is ready. My lovely, lovely imps, there is a war raging on around us. And a lot of it is ephemeral, but a lot of it is not. What I am talking about is a culture war. There is indeed a culture war raging all around us. Uh, and in that culture war, uh, uh, there is a constant risk yeah this is it of the war because here's the yeah here's the fucking pronouns part it's right up here hold on okay where the hell did it go i just had it here what the fuck's going on there you go i swear i retweeted this did this guy delete it <gasps> did he delete it Hold on. There you Where go. Oh, here it is. Here we go. Thank God. Found Let's it. There it. you go. Wait, this. why Let's didn't watch you just eat the five? Did these I spell your quick. name Hold wrong? On. Wait, this isn't the one. This is the wrong one. Oh, it did get deleted. What? How did it get deleted? Ah, uh, here's another one. Wait, it's okay. Why? We'll oh, let's watch this together. Here. Anyway, I there it is. Eighty five two D Derek. Okay. Just watch this. Let's. I'm not gonna add any commentary right now. Let's oh yeah, Grime Dango. We were talking about it. We were talking about the Mainer Bar. Watch it together. I just want to say something to you, Beto. Just want to say a little, little something. There is nothing I love more. Taking my headphones off. Fuck that. Bethesda. There is nothing I love more than to 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 sit down, comfy chair, turn on my PC, fire up a brand new RPG, uh, uh, lose myself, think, oh my god, just think of this world, just think of all the planets I can visit, all the immersive things that I can get involved with, all the fights all the relationships, all the people I meet, all the places I go. I'm so excited to go there. And you know, I love nothing more than with all of that laid out in front of me. I love nothing more than to be dragged out at every fucking conceivable opportunity so you can fucking current day us. Sorry, did you want to get immersed in our world? Yeah, well, guess what? Fucking pronouns! Fucking gender ambiguity! Fucking current day Californian shit! Cause that's all we fucking know! Cause we're boring! We're so fucking boring! I was just thinking that, Fortnite! Fortnite, I was literally just thinking that! We can't see past our own fucking reflection! That's the level of our narcissism here at Bethesda Western Game Company. Fuck your immersion. Fuck you having a good time. Fuck you falling into a world and just getting lost. No, no, no. Current fucking day. It's so funny that he made this rant about a sci-fi game too. Fuck off. You're boring. You're fucking dull. You have nothing to say! You are a one hived mind twat waffle! That's all you fucking are! And you wonder why people are getting so fucking sick and tired! You take everything we love, all our immersions, all our fantasies, all our escapism, and you just can't help shovel your dog shit fucking crap ideology into everything. And yet you opened your mouth and ate deep. Bon appetit. Every single solitary fucking thing.
Now this rant was brought to you by uh, the video game Starfield by Bethesda uh, offering you three options for your pronouns for your character in the character creator. That's right. You can, in the character creator, among options like adjusting the cheekbone size, uh, uh, making their chest this big and their waist this big, or their waist this big and their chest and hips this big so that your character is a walking diamond. Uh, in addition to being able to make your character's head a literal triangle and color them bright yellow, they also gave you an option to choose from multiple pronoun options for your character, which prompted this type of deranged meltdown. And I just have to say, I think it speaks for itself in a lot of ways, doesn't it? Like, um, the existence of trans people has done so much mental damage to these incredibly weak-souled individuals, these incredibly small-minded and uncreative individuals, um, that they actually lose their minds at a uh, incredibly innocuous and minor option in a character creator. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, it's pretty amazing, right? Um, I just gave you an uh, 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 two two examples of the whole range here, from a a housebound gamer loser to the richest man in the world whose brains have been completely and utterly shattered just by their own obsession with trans people. And keep in mind, they're not transitioning. They're not presumably doubting their own gender. They're just mad that trans people exist. They're mad that somebody goes, hey, maybe people in their character creator should be able to choose their pronouns. Again, in the character creator where, if you so desire, uh, you can make your character's head look like a flounder that has been painted orange. A uh, character creator where, if you so desire it, um, your character can have uh, a, a literal square for a head. A character creator uh, where you can have, like, I don't know, uh, uh, extremely, uh, I don't even know. Like, there's so much you can do in these things. You can put must mustaches that do not match with beards, okay? You can dye your mustache green and your beard blue. Wait, those actually do match, but whatever. You get the picture. But, but, but pronouns, my man. Pronouns. Anyway, that's a good taste of this video. Uh, and, and the link is there. This one we didn't, how did we not put this one up as a video? I'm kind of surprised that we didn't, uh, we didn't actually put that up as its own standalone video. Anyway, here's the timestamp if you want to go watch that full segment. Um, yeah. I guess it's just because we had so many other banger segments at the time. A lot of people played a lot of Starfield and gave it a good chance, and uh, I'm not going to lie. I am not regretting my choice to not play it at all. Um, it looks terrible, um, but uh, I, I imagine there's at least something in there that was at least somewhat enjoyable. The character creator did look nice, I will say, but yeah, I'm certainly um, not regretting sitting out on Starfield. Um, but to be fair, I've basically been checked out from the Bethesda library for some time. Skyrim was my last, uh, was my last, you know, Bethesda venture. Yeah. I've seen a lot of content about it, though. Um, some of it very good. And in fact, um, actually, I'm going to do this a little bit later. I'll have to remember this. Because um, uh, we're going to do my year in review for games after this, which is going to be really fun, where I'm going to go through all the games I played this year and talk about them. However, um, 
However, uh, that'll be after this, and I have a seri I have a channel to shout out. Yeah. Why did what turn green? Oh, because of the um the green text. You use the little carrot. The carrot will turn the text green. It's a it's kind of an old thing. Let's get back into it. So here's my Baldur's Gate three review. Also got low reviews because you know the reviews they always get they they always get low views even though I stand by them. Uh, I called it Baldur's Gate would probably get game of the year and it did get game of the year. Uh, Baldur's Gate three legendary cannot recommend it enough. So good, just amazing, just amazing, genuinely incredible. Um, go watch the review if you want to hear my full thoughts on it because it's a banger review. Then. The road trip video. The road trip video. Oh man, the road trip video. For campground, there was like hundreds of people in just our section of the campground. It was so, there were so many people there. I was really, really shocked by it. Um, and so the campground was, uh, you know, it was really nice. Why is the audio on the left? That was an error that happened in this video. Um, when when this video got edited, the audio levels were imbalanced. I know it kind of sucks, but it it, it kind of sucks, but it's okay. Some of this my is pictures. The, uh, the anyway, this video is a video I am very proud of. Even though we had some audio issues, it's okay. You can uh, you can actually just you can actually just uh set it to um mono. I know it's it's a problem. But whatever. Um, I'm still really proud um, of this video. I basically tell my entire story of traveling all the way across America and back. Um, it's a very personal story. Um, and I want to talk about it just a tiny bit more. Um, you guys, most of you will know, I was gone for about a month um, while I was on the road. And... I'm really happy that I decided to take that break um, because uh, before I left, I was not in a good place mentally. Um, there was a lot of, this year was a very stressful year. Uh, I know that I've spent a lot of the stream talking about like which videos I'm proud of and stuff like that. But on a mental level, this year was a really hard year for me. Um, a really, really hard year. Um, I don't know. I don't want to get too personal, but this year, there was a huge period of this year where I was having pretty much nightly, uh, panic attacks. No real explanation. Just, um, just would lay in bed and suddenly my mind would be full of a sense of danger and uh, a a sense of impending uh, threat to the people that I love. And uh, I don't really know entirely what caused that still. Um, it could have just been cumulative stuff that was pushing me over the edge. Um, this year was a unique year in the creation of my content in that um, this is the first year where I basically never had a, a, what I would even describe as even like a mildly manic period of, uh, of content creation, of art creation, whatever you want to call it. Um, uh, most of the years that I've been making content, I would go through waves where I would be super hyped up. I would be super amped up and ready to make stuff. I would be super excited. I could, I would want to get on stream every single day, would be excited for it, and I would be doing the craziest stuff you could imagine, doing a debate stream, debate stream, this, that, the other thing, every, every single thing I could think of. Um, and then I would have periods where I felt down, but I would get myself to, 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 to go and make my content, and I would make it good, and I would put in my all, but it would be a lot harder emotionally. And this year, I didn't have basically any of that. I don't know if it's actually mania or anything like that, but I didn't have any of that. 
this year, this whole year, um, I've been fueling off of a lot of self-discipline and out of a lot of long-term thinking, knowing that I've been sort of having my head down uh, and this whole year has been like that. And it was especially bad right before I went on my trip. Um, I don't know. There's a lot of things. Um, this year I've been struggling a lot with feeling the value of my work, with feeling the value of what I create. Um, it's been a constant problem, a full calendar, more, more than that, a calendar year of basically constantly doubting myself. It's been very difficult. Um, and going on this trip was um, a big deal for me. It was, a, it, was a, it was my goal to step away and to just go see the actual real world and lots of it. To go see places I had never been, people I had never seen before, to taste foods that I had never had before. And I did that. And during that time, I wanted to spend a lot of that time thinking about why I do what I do, why I make anything at all, um, why I turn on this camera and talk to everybody, um, why I go through the stress, the harassment, why I deal with the critiques, the really mean critiques that people say, uh, which they do all the time, by the way. I don't talk about it very much anymore, but boy, oh boy, does it happen. I get some real fucking mean shit sent at me all the time. Not even on videos where I'm critiquing somebody or anything. It's on random stuff. And um, the road trip was something special. It was a true life experience. A never, a, a, a thing that I will never forget. Spending um you know weeks a month on the road driving across the entire the entirety of of west to east north america um with my partners and my dog going and seeing some of the places that i grew up in and sharing that with my my found family my family of choice it was a uh a spiritually important journey. We'll put it that way, for that, for lack of a better term. Um, and I feel stronger having come back. But even still, even after that, um, I I still have had a lot of trouble um, with that. What I mentioned before, that emotional, like there's there's not really been um, that those moments of where I feel like I'm on fire. You know, there's been a few, there's been short moments like on stream when I'm really in the, in the mode. And on one hand, I'm proud of my ability to still make good stuff, even when I don't have that fire that's like driving me forward, that I've learned how to self propel. Um, but also it's been very difficult. And um, I hope that in 2024, I can use the skills that I've learned and be able to recapture some of the confidence and the um, unapologeticness. I mean, I've talked about this this year already. Some of you are going to remember me talking about this, how one of my frustrations, and this, this was something that was really hard to talk about on stream, one of my frustrations this year that has been recurring, and I don't think I've fully solved it, is, the, um, is that I've, I've begun to doubt myself on stream um, sometimes. And what I mean by, not doubt myself, that's the wrong way of putting it, but it's like I can see myself. It rea it's like, a, I talk about how it's like in Inside by Bo Burnham. Uh, Bo Burnham's Inside. There's this part where he reacts to himself and then he reacts to himself reacting to himself and then he reacts to himself reacting to himself reacting to himself. The reactception. Um, that has been something like that I feel that is new. In the past, I would go on stream and I would fire it. I was in the moment. And a lot of this year has been me struggling against second guessing um, what I'm saying against this sort of pa creeping paranoia that I'm uh, that that I don't know. It's like uh, even if I push through it, I'm always aware, hyper aware of everything that I'm saying and doing. 
it makes it very hard to uh it makes it much harder to 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 have those extremely fun flow moments on stream i haven't quite fixed it yet i don't know what caused it or where it came from i have some ideas you know obviously i think that some of it is the fact that like i dealt with some of the most deranged behavior ever and i think it permanently changed my approach towards making stuff because there's a constant there's a part of my mind that is constantly like oh you said things this way um people are gonna do this you know and even if i often overcome that you guys know i still fucking say what i want to say but it's there now and it wasn't there before in the past i would i had this sort of passive confidence in what i was saying and i want to regain that to some degree or at least be able to tone down the the reactception that goes on in my own head um do you think it could be burnout or a mild form of depression um oh i i know that like i've struggled with depression my whole life i know that part um but i will say that there has definitely been like i've definitely struggled with depression this year and i think part of it is just like um Going into 2024, I'm making a lot of changes. Um, I've already, you guys already saw, I mean, here, look, we can make this relevant to what we're talking about here. The new era. The new era, I meant that very seriously. I meant it very seriously and I've kept my promise. The new era has been uh, uh, like all of the things that I said I wanted to do in the new era, I've been keeping up with and I've been doing. Um, a lot more, you know, free form, a lot more uh, demon mama stuff, stuff that is originally mine, a lot less. I've toned down the upload schedule because I knew that it needed to happen. Um, the new era uh, was a promise. And um, yeah, and and so I don't know, I'm hoping the new era, I, I, I lost my train of thought a little bit, but um I lost my train of thought a little bit with what I was saying. The new era, basically what I'm saying is the new era is 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 something I took seriously. And I mean it. Going into 2024, I'm hoping to change the way that I approach things. Oh, I remember what I was saying. Sorry. Um, there was a lot of stuff that happened this year and there was a lot of things that I... You guys can probably tell. There's been a lot of changes in the space recently the space the space doesn't exist anymore okay and the last few ties and tendrils that existed have essentially blown apart at the seams okay um whatever the space was that existed before it is totally gone i predicted this all the way back with the um with my video the, the which we just talked about just just an hour and a half or two hours or however long it's been just a little bit ago my video about the funeral for the online you know the, for the twitter left and I've talked about it since then. The um, the space is dead. It's gone. But you guys have witnessed the sort of bursting corpse. Probably. Some of you, at least. Um, it's gotten really bad. But um, the reality is that um, there's been a lot of shit that's been rotten and bad and stressful behind the scenes as well. Some of this made it to the public. For example, this right here. The... The video that I did, Hypocrisy, Slurs, and Betrayal, Brianna Wu's Failure to Lead, that was an example of exactly what I'm talking about, where I have not been involved in any fucking drama that involved that shit at all, and yet uh, me and my partner got fucking shit on and mistreated. Um, hey, thank you. Um, yeah, that'd be nice. Oh, okay. I love you. Okay. Oh, and tomorrow, um, tomorrow we can go to bed mode. Together, I guess. Um, speaking of dough, um, is it important to have a space? Um, I don't know. I don't know how to think about that yet. I don't have the words to to fully form it. Um, but the uh, 
the fucking it's been a mess and a lot of people have been hurt and again i'm not going to talk about most of this because i don't care and i won't so you can't do it but a lot of there's been a lot of hurt there's been a lot of pain there's been a lot of uh severing um in behind scenes uh there's been a lot of uh weird dispute there's been a lot of weird behavior and um for some of this year it was taking a severe toll on me and in fact for a good chunk of this year it was taking a severe toll on me but i can officially say that uh, I meant it when I said the new era, and this shit is not coming with me into 2024. It simply isn't. Um, and I'm hoping, this is a very long way of saying that I'm hope, excuse me, I'm hoping that that will um, essentially allow me to feel a lot better about content creation. Um, in a lot of ways, I found myself, uh, uh, I found myself I found myself in some uncomfortable positions this year. Um, a lot of them were not because of like decisions that I made, but they were uh, downstream of like, I don't know. They were downstream of my participation in social groups. They were downstream of my desire to, uh, to, to make political content. Kind of like how the death of the debate panel scene happened. You know, the death of the debate panel scene happened a lot faster, in my opinion. But um, it was this, it was this swirling. And, um, and I was there because I wanted to do the debate. I wanted to debate people and I wanted to do that. I was there for different reasons than a lot of people. And uh, sometimes you find yourself caught up in a place that you don't want to be. Do we have a name for the new era? The Grand Gardener. The Grand Gardener arc. That's the new name for it. We're calling it, yeah, that's right. I'm going full fucking anime villain. Or anime hero. Depends on your perspective. It's the Grand Gardener arc. That's the, uh, that's the, uh, that's the goal. That's the aspiration for 2024. I mean, in some ways, yes, Somniostatic. It was complicated. It's been very complicated. I, I, I don't, there's no way to talk about everything that's happened this year. But all I can say is that um, certain aspects of the process of content creation have become very miserable. And I, I have been disentangling myself, making decisions to, do, to go in my own direction uh, that doesn't involve being cruel to other people uh, none of that. You know, I'm not doing some bridge burning game. I'm not playing some giant game of blow up the bridge or anything like that. I have just made the decision that I have a direction that I'm going in. I have a vision for what I want to build. I have a vision for what I'm going for. I have a vision for how how I want to interact with people. And some people will join me in that and some people will not. And that's fine. Fine. I have things I want to make. I want to take my content to the next level. I don't want to be, uh, I don't want to spend any more time um, even touching the, the, the sort of goop that remains from the rotting carcass. Um, I tried to bury it, people dug it back out, and that's their choice and not mine. I've got a garden to grow, okay? That's the way I'm looking at it. We have Chariot, I think we have too. I have a feeling, Chariot, that you and I are going to be pruning and planting and cultivating and grafting together in a grand garden this year. I have a feeling that I have a feeling that that's the case. Bees adieu with the five gifted tier one subs. Thank you so much for supporting this show. It really means the world to me. The gates of hell have been shuttered to drama. Our demonic queen has cast out the drama frogs. May it be decreed henceforth. The, do the drama frogs may cast off their, their drama frogishness. They may simply become devil frogs. They may simply become impy frogs. Look at that. Our whole chat is full of imp frogs. Come on. Look at this. The, fill up the chat. Look at all these. Look at all these imp frogs. There's so many different little impy frogs. There's so many of them. Look at them all. 
Our imps love being frogs. There's so many of them. Some of them are happy, some of them are sad, some of them are looking at things, some of them are taking little pictures. Look at that, look at them all. Mithril with the $10. Here's some hope for the future. My five-month-old grandson loves watching you with me and was chair dancing to the bathroom song. You're already reaching the newest generation. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Your, your five-month-old old, five grandson sounds cool as hell. Doe just brought me some soda. Wonderful. Thank you so much for supporting the show. Killjoy40k says, do you think part of the reason things are as charged as they are is that a ton of people got big during COVID and those numbers are shrinking? Also, elections are coming up and that makes people unhinged. I guess what I'm asking is, do you think there's a meta behind some of the directions people have taken their channels? Um, maybe, but I think that it's actually more simple than that. I, I simply think it's the same cycle we've seen um, in the modern internet era of social media. Uh, social media um, often drives people crazy. Um, and it, and it's, especially when there's money involved, um, people lose sight of themselves. They get lost in the sauce is the term that I would use. They get lost in the sauce and, um, yeah, um, people get lost in the sauce. They lose sight of what matters to them. Sometimes they completely throw out everything that they ever believed in, um, because they think they're chasing a paycheck. Often that paycheck doesn't even exist in the first place and they would have been better off just doing their own thing and being authentic um yeah so but that's their problem that's not what i'm doing i'm making my decision they can make theirs i'll see them all i'll see them all i'll see them all uh uh in in the uh in the future we'll see where we all end up okay i have a feeling i'm gonna be sitting in a nice garden Well, we'll see. I'm planning on, uh, LB, I'm planning on doing, I'm pl planning on finally revising the stream setup. Hopefully, early 2024 will bring us the new look for the stream because it's time that we revise this. It's been a great, this set has been great. It looks beautiful, but I think it's time for a new era. So we'll see how I decide to go with that. Prosy Rosie says, have you seen the Xander Hall drama? Um, of course I have. Um, of course I've seen the Xander Hall drama. Uh, it's not just Xander Hall drama either. Um, yeah. But yes, of course I have. True, Mixed Dizzy, true. That was a great one. The Themel joke was fantastic. LB says, I respect your your choice to avoid the hell out of that. Um, yeah, I explicitly told people not to involve me in it. Um, and yeah, I already said this last stream. If I'm forced to make a comment, no one's going to be happy. No one's going to be happy at all. Can we get a sneak peek into, into how you'll garden the left? There's no way to sneak peek it. It, it has to be grown. Just like a forest. but we can have a vision. And my vision is one of vibrance. My vision is one of biodiversity. My vision is one of, of, of blankets of multicolored mosses and flowers crawling all over the barren wasteland that lies before us right now. Zucchina says, I'm happy that you've said out of it. I am too, to the best of my ability. What who win with the $5 super chat. Thank you so much. I found your channel after seeing you in the debates a while ago, and I'm so glad I did. I really appreciate what you do here. Thank you. That means a lot to me. Thank you for supporting what I do. Seriously. Ukronian says, thankfully, it seems to have finally died down, which I'm grateful for. I don't, I, I literally don't. There's no comment on that. I have no fucking clue. Um, rewilding the internet. That's right, Mithril. That's right. Straight up. Straight up. Rewilding. 
That's a good idea. The reforestation. Vontix with the $5 says, do we have time to guard in the left? I have this looming feeling of dread that we'll be living in a dictatorship this time next year. It makes optimism hard. My friend, we have no choice. We have no choice but to guard in the left. And it's not just about gardening the left either. It's about gardening our lives. Rewilding is our only option, regardless of what happens. Uh, planting beautiful flowers uh, so that they can take root, even if they're popping up between cracked asphalt, is our only option. It is what we have to do. We can either do that or we can uh, and, and see some beauty uh, sprout or we can choose to just lie there on the hot asphalt and not even get to see the beautiful colors of the flowers. Uh, personally, even if, I, if I'm going to be dying on asphalt one way or another, I would prefer to see the beautiful flowers growing up around me. Stay strong. We have no idea what next year is going to bring. A year is a very long time in electoral terms. There's a lot of wild shit going down. And guess what? People have lived through worse times than this. People have lived through way more severe times than this in the past. And they will do so again in the future. Um, there is no the end. Not really. I mean, there could, there will eventually be. You know, maybe an asteroid will hit Earth or the sun will blow up. There's, an, a, there's a, that type of end eventually. But then we're not there yet. Uh, as long as your heart is beating, as long as your breath is still going, there is still a fight to be had. As long as there is even a drop of life. And keep in mind that the people who decide to garden, even when times are tough, the people who decide to plant, even when times are tough, uh, end up making the world a better place. And they make it a whole lot harder. Um, a lot harder for... Uh, weird uh, authoritarian totalitarian freaks to win totalitarian freaks um, the world uh, uh, that we're struggling against succeeds mostly because people have no other choice because they are left desperate and so they have no choice but to feed themselves into the machine in order to go on another day by choosing to plant some seeds by choosing to spread some beauty by choosing to build strong connections we offer alternatives even in our simple actions, alternatives to just feeding ourselves to the machine. And I think that's very powerful. Zucchina says, can we have a night where we just talk about our favorite horror games and movies? abso fucking lutely I would love to do that. 85D2D Derek says, Demon Mama, the church militant coverage was channeling some sort of ineffable genius. It's hard proof that you and this community have a unique ability to see threads that others do not pick up on. Thank you. And that means a lot coming from you. That really does. You've been with me here for such a long time. You've come back and, and been around at so many different points. It really means the world to me. Thank you so much. Mixed Dizzy says, I really like this rewilding idea. I've spent too much time as, a, as, an, inv as an invalid shut-in. I got my electric wheelchair attachment finally, and my first outing on it was a mess, but I'm gearing up to have better outings, and I will slowly ramp back up into motion again. That is awesome. Keep at it. Don't give up. Oh, no, Mr. Krabs. Not tonight. No, 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 no. We have a lot more to do. We're not even done. I just needed to finish my rant about the new era and all of this stuff. Now we are getting closer, by the way, to the moment. Here is all of the Israel-Palestine coverage, which speaks for itself. Um, which I want to say one thing on. One of the things that was weird that happened during the um, during the hippy dippy debate i don't know how many of you actually saw that but one of the things that was really weird is one of the debaters um said that they felt like people were going to forget about the israel palestine stuff and i think that was so incorrect there have been two major issues that basically nobody has forgotten about and it is ukraine 
and Israel Palestine. Both of these issues, and Israel Palestine is like 10 times more the case. Nobody is forgetting about this. There has been basically, the, the energy has not dropped almost at all since since the conversation since the, this latest flare up began um yeah it's actually it's actually wild um even though obviously some people have burnt out on on constant news coverage of it the care about the issue hasn't gone down and people are still engaged and they are still talking about it and they are still thinking about it in fact i think it's one of the things most likely to be a a uh to, to be basically impossible for Joe Biden to shake off. I think it will uh, only continue to be relevant. Gayfesh says, I don't really hear anyone talking about Ukraine that much, but maybe that's just where my attention is. I see a lot of it still, uh, quite a lot of it. Um, now, of course, part of that is because, uh, you know, I don't know, maybe we probably just have slightly different falls. I still hear people talking about it quite frequently. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think it's in a lot of people's minds, even still. I will say that obviously the day-to-day -day discussion has dropped off a little bit, but a lot of that is just because people have become, you know, they've settled in their positions. When it first started happening, people were learning a lot of stuff and they didn't, they didn't know where they stood yet on everything. Or they didn't know, or if they knew where they stood, they didn't know how to say, how they didn't know how to express where they stood. And that's changed. So, of course, there's a little bit less of the, like, flare-up arguments, but, but yeah. That's also true, Alora. Alora says, it's also because the war has sort of settled into grinding trench warfare without much movement. Horrifying, but also true. There's not much hard news, but people are certainly paying attention. Um, and I think that that will continue to be the case because the Ukraine war um, is so relevant to European political uh, 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 geopolitics. Um, basically, every country in Europe is extremely uh, nervous about which direction the war is going to go. So anyway, let's continue. We have the President Sunday actual Jake debate. Absolutely hilarious. Oh man, one of my, two of my favorite videos from this year. The Elden Ring reaction, the Shadowversity Elden Ring review, legendary. And look at this, T almost 10,000 views on me reviewing a review. 10,000 views. Killer! Absolutely killer. I'm so proud of that. I'm so proud of that video. And of course, my Lords of the Fallen review, which only got 914 views. Only 914 people watched my Lords of the Fallen review. Ouch. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Oof. But um, that review made me want to buy Lords of the Fallen. Look, Lords of the Fallen, I'm, I, I wanted people to give that game a chance, but I'm not going to lie. It has struggled so much. And, it is, and the creators of the game are like the, the publishing. Okay, because it was like a publisher-made game, it was made by Hexworks, which was a publisher, and they shopped it around to three different developers and then eventually just made their own in-house development team. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was about to show them. I was about to show them Grime Dango. Literally, yes. That's what I was about to do. Oh, Jesus Christ. Here, I gotta show. I gotta show. Watch this, okay? Hey! Tipster Raid! Come on in! Come on in! Come on in, everybody! Get on in here! Welcome! We are doing the Demon Mama Year in Review. It has been a blast. And we are having a really good time reviewing wild moments clips uh views uh videos takes everything it's been wonderful please come in and get comfortable it's wonderful to have you thank you so much for the raid just play lies of p instead uh i understand but hold on let me talk about this okay lords of the fallen all right um i played 
a ton of Lords of the Fallen. I had a lot of fun with Lords of the Fallen, but I also had a lot of problems with Lords of the Fallen. Oh, wait, there's the raid. Welcome! Welcome, tipster viewers. Please, come in, come in, come in. And consider coming on over to my website, demonmama.com forward slash live. I am very happy to have you. We are doing the Demon Mama Mega Year in Review 2023. It has been a wild ride so far. We've been reviewing my best clips. We've been, uh, we've been getting nostalgic. We've been reminiscing. We've been reviewing some of my hot takes. I just got through talking about some of my greatest regrets from this year. Well, that was a heavy section, but also very interesting. We talked about my giant road trip across America. I traveled from the West Coast to the East Coast and back in an RV. It was crazy. We are, we are now talking about some of my latest sort of last few months of videos. And we would love to have you come get comfy with us. So come on in, get comfy. Hey, Bob. Thanks, tipster. Come on in and get comfortable. Um... Lords of the Fallen. Uh, Lords of the Fallen. So I did a review of Lords of the Fallen, and it, nobody watched it. <laughs> God damn it. Nobody watched my Lords of the Fallen review. It got 914 views, one of my worst performing videos of the entire year. And I don't apologize. I would still post that goddamn review tomorrow, even if I knew that it was going to get terrible reviews. Because I stand by it. My review of uh, Lords of the Fallen encouraged people to try it out, but also to be aware of the flaws of the game. And boy, are there some flaws. However, however, one thing has to be said, which is that the publishers uh, and developer, uh, the development studio, have gotten pathetically desperate. And I'm going to show you something that is going to make you immediately cringe, okay? I want you to prepare yourselves for physical cringe. Behold, the current, the current image, splash image for Lords of the Fallen on Steam. Oh my God. Wh what, oh my, what were they fucking thinking? Jesus Christ. They put my boy Zeostorm on there. And my review didn't get put on here. I am so angry. The cringe that they put, they didn't put my review on there. This is what I want to change next year. Next year, I want my reviews to be popular enough that when I review a partially bungled, but somewhat, but, but genuinely overall pretty enjoyable, but also really flawed game that they put my review on their cringe wall of scores. Enhance. I can only enhance so much. Zeostorm. Zeostorm made it on there. My boy Zeostorm. I got, you guys, I shout out Zeostorm all the time. We got that covered. Look at this one. 10 out of 10. IGN France. Now something that's also really pathetic about this, as Grime Dango is pointing out, Grime Dango is pointing out that most of these people didn't even give scores out of 10. I know for a fact, because I watch Zeostorm's video, that he doesn't use a 10 point scale. And if he did, it would have been like as an offhanded comment. He doesn't do like a blank out of 10. He just talks about the game and posts the review. A lot of these people don't post scores. They were converting scores. They were adding scores to people who didn't give them scores so that they could do this. And that is one of the most screams of desperation. Genuinely painful. Actually and genuinely painful. It's so sad. And the worst thing is, it's going to do damage to the game. Because no one is going to buy a game that looks like this. No one on earth is going to buy a game that's this desperate. Look at the reviews over here. Mixed. Reviews, recent, mixed. All reviews, mixed. 
Now, I think my review of the game stands on its own. If you guys haven't seen my review of it, uh, if you like game reviews at all, I think you will find what I have to say very interesting. I go very in-depth in my review, and I have a lot of things to say. I still stand by recommending the game Lords of the Fallen. There was a lot that I enjoyed in it, particularly. Um, I really, really enjoyed how many incredibly cool-looking armor sets there are in the game. And also, um, there's a lot of really fun boss fights. Oh, yeah. Oh, they actually banned doing that. That's crazy. No, yeah, no award scores. No awards or scores in the, in the cover. Wow, that's crazy. No review scores of any kind. No award names, symbols, or logos. No discount marketing. No text or imagery promoting a different product. No other miscellaneous text. Actually against the rules, too. Crazy. Cosmos of Infinity says, the fact that it has that many reviews, though, shows that there was some solid interest in the game and people did turn out to buy it. They absolutely did. That's the crazy thing, and that's the sad thing. Lords of the Fallen is a game, um, the way the game is made, it it is, it is cribs from Dark Souls a lot. Like, a lot. Um, and one of the ways that it cribs from Dark Souls is that it has extremely complicated secrets and, and uh, NPC quests. They basically don't tell you how to do any of them, and some of them are ridiculous. They're actually, some of them are actually ridiculous. Um, and as a result, you basically need a community that can build knowledge to share. Um, the reason why the Dark Souls games, uh, and all, all of FromSoft's games, really, um, are able to do such weird stuff is because people will dig into their secrets. People don't care that it's hard to figure out how to um, do like an NPC quest because you will be able to seek knowledge from other players. This is something that I specifically brought up in my beginner's guide to Dark Souls. Um, this game also demands that and it will never actually get it. Also, um, God, lo let me show you something really disgusting, okay? This builds off of this, I promise. If you look on here, okay? If we look closely, where is it here? Fextra Life. Right up here, Fextra Life. One of the reviews they have at the top, which gave them a 9 out of 10, is from Fextra Life. Fextra Life is one of those fucking shady, um, wic uh, you know, privatized wic uh, wiki websites, okay? Fextra Life sucks! It fucking sucks! It's horrible! They do some really shady shit. Like, for example, they embed garbage-ass streams onto their wiki pages so that their streamers, their affiliated streamers, accumulate views from people trying to look up random information about Monster Hunter or Dark Souls or whatever. It's so scummy. So scummy. God damn, it's so scummy. Okay? Now, get this. Fextra Life had a day one wiki whipped up for Lords of the Fallen. Day one. Extra Life had a wiki. Now, 90% of it was AI-generated garbage. Literally wrong information. On day one of the game, I verified that their information for weapon scaling was incorrect for almost every weapon. That their information for um, catalyst, like, like spell casting weapons, was incorrect. I was able to verify that myself. And this is why Lords of the Fallen is doomed. And it feels really sad because I played a lot of Lords of the Fallen and there was a lot that I really genuinely enjoyed in Lords of the Fallen. There are problems. It is a game with problems. But it is also, at its heart, there is a lot to enjoy. A lot to enjoy. How many hours did I put into it? We're going to get into the gaming stuff in just a minute. But uh, real quick, I want to look and see how many hours I got into um, Lords of the Fallen. Six, six, 67 hours. I got almost all of the achievements. Oh yeah, I have the pictures. I have achievements. I got achievements. I got endgame achievements when point 
What was it? What was it? Let me see. Let me. I've got them in here. Hold on. I've got them in my screenshot folder. Hold on. Let me go double check. I want to remember what numbers I had because it was actually crazy how rare. I posted it actually. Wait a minute. It's on my YouTube channel. Yeah, here we go. 0.3% of players. 0.1% of players for some of the achievements that I got when I got them. I took it seriously. I really liked it even though I had a lot of critiques for it, which are in my video. There were things that by the end of the game, I actually hated, but a lot of the game was really fun. And there was a lot of stuff that was truly fantastic. The, the visual design for this game, wonderful, fantastic. The boss fights, really fun. Um, the amount of items that you that there are to discover in the game, the amount of spells, the spell casting system, was sick. They did such a good job with the spell casting system. Oh my god, Chariot. That's crazy. I got into it. It grabbed me. Yes, I got the ending. Uh, yes, I did. Exactly, Coconut Julius. I got the secret ending, which was very difficult, by the way. The secret ending was really hard to do. Um... The, the problem is that this game needs a community. It needs community knowledge to even be enjoyable, to find all the secrets, to find all the cool things that they put, the, they put into the game. And it won't happen because too many players fell off because of the way that they, the, the way that the end game was handled, because too many players fell, uh, because new players aren't feeling the love because the old players didn't feel the love. So there's been this horrible spiral, and now there's this game that is full of really cool stuff that nobody is ever going to find and won't really be able to have the good experience. And also, it was very arrogant of them to assume that they could just drop a, a game that pulls some of the shit that FromSoft has earned. FromSoft is able to do deranged secrets and NPC quests that are totally convoluted and confusing, because they've proven themselves and there is a community of people who love their games enough that they will document their knowledge like a historian. I mean it. Check out Tarnished Archaeologist if you don't believe me. One of the most high quality um, uh, fictional hist history channels that has ever fucking existed. Yeah, that's what I was pointing out. I pointed that out, Bizadu. Yep, it's super slimy, Bizadu. I'm talking about my Lords of the Fallen review and why people should go watch it. Anyway, there's not much else I have to say about it. I wanted people to go watch my review, and you should go watch it. Nobody watched this one. Here, I'm going to even link it in chat, just so you guys have to. Here, go put it on your watch later. I promise, the review is good. It's really in-depth. I did a really in-depth review, okay? We had the atheism debates. We had the detransition discussions. The detransition video. Killers of the Flower Moon review. Awesome. Cooking Mama, the Holy Mackerel stuff, the Boogie Drama Mama, the Boogie 298 Drama Mama, that was wild. And of course, we just did a review of all of this content, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it. Of course, I'm unbelievably proud of the Holy Mackerel comment content that we've been doing. I've been unbelievably proud of the coverage of Church Militant. The last... The Drama Mama on James Summerton. Very, very proud of that. Chariot says, This is like that meme post about the lady whose peepaw invited his grandkids for burgers and only she came. I watch your, I watch your review videos. That means the world to me. It really does. It really does. Because... Like I've said a million times, uh, and I, I will unapologetically say this a hundred thousand times, I think Chariot is, uh, I think Chariot's media 
video essays are legitimately some of the best on YouTube. And I mean that 100%. Uh, when Chariot puts out a new video essay, I watch it so quick. I get, it's like, it's like right up there. The level of excitement for one of Chariot's media, uh, media video essays, uh, is right up there with Jacob Geller for me. I mean that. Okay. Obviously Jacob Geller has a crazy amount of production value. Obviously Jacob Geller's got a nice camera and he's been at this for years. You know, he's got a lot of money, but as far as just my personal excitement, when Chariot posts a new media video essay, I'm like, give me that. The fucking Star Wars shit, your videos on Star Wars legitimately changed, gave me a totally new view on Star Wars, completely changed the way that I approach it. So, you watching my reviews means a lot to me. Means a fucking lot to me. Oh, thank you, Tiki Dragon. Jacob Geller, obviously, I'm not trying to, I'm not, I, I don't want to just say that it's just be his production value. Jacob Geller's videos are amazing, but I just think that when I think of two people who constantly make me rethink my positions and reanalyze media and get excited to check out media, I think of Chariot and I think of Jacob Geller. Those are two people who basically always, every time I watch one of their videos, I always walk away learning something new or being excited about something that I wasn't excited about before. Okay, the infamous Yule Log ser Serenade might have been the lowest view count of any video this year, but guess what? I'm still glad we posted it. This is all improv. The Yule Log Serenade is just me improving on the piano. So we've done the Demon Mama content review of the year. We have one more thing to do after this. But I want to talk about, before we move on to the last bit of prepared stuff that I have for you all, I wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about, um, talking about my plans for 2024. And I wanted to also say thank you all for being here. Thank you all for watching me through all of this crazy year. Thank you all for getting excited with me about this nostalgia stream. Thank you all for getting excited with, with me about 2024. In 2024, I have a lot of personal things that I'm going to be undertaking. 2024 is going to be a year in which, um, a couple of years ago, I issued myself a new year challenge to watch a whole bunch more movies. And then, I issued myself a challenge to play a whole bunch of new video games. New video games I hadn't done. And this year, my challenge to myself is uh, to read more. I'm really going to uh, uh, dive in and try to read as much as possible this coming year. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. What's that? I will, I will, don't worry. I have one more thing to do, which is my games of year in review. That's it. My partner has asked me to wrap it up soon so that I can go um, relax and enjoy the holidays. So um, I'm going to be doing a lot of, um, of, uh, of reading this year. And of course, I'm going to continue my previous uh, commitments. I obviously want to keep watching lots of movies. I want to keep playing games. I want to dive into art in full. And I know that part of that is I need to get myself back into a reading mood. I read almost all 
of um, I, I read I read all of the uh, uh, Hannibal Lecter series this year, with the exception of one book. I didn't finish the last one. That's okay. Um, but uh, I read the uh, I read most of Berserk. I'm almost done with Berserk. Um, very happy with that. Uh, I read a whole bunch of Kojima's book. I read a whole bunch of Dune. I'm still working my way through Dune. I've read about half of Dune now. But I, I want to go next level. I want to read a lot next year. And that's one of my personal goals. But for this channel, I want to bring you the new era in full. More original my stuff. The unapologetically me stuff. The stuff that drives the haters wild. The stuff that makes uh, that, that makes the drama frogs cry. Okay? I want to bring the stuff that you all love. That my core audience love. And that I love to make. I want to do more media reviews. I want to find more weird internet phenomenon like uh, like our coverage of mi Church Militant, okay? I want to talk about topics. And of course, I want to make sure that when we talk about stuff like the, the fact that it's an election year, that we are knocking it out of the park. I want my commentary on that type of stuff to be next level, okay? Do you have the Berserk Deluxe books? Yeah, I have all of I have all of the Berserk Deluxe books up to issue ten, and I'm gonna get eleven and twelve, um, and then after that I'll have to read them digitally or something. But yeah. Of course, I am. I am going to work on getting the rights to Holy Mackerel. My goal for 2024 is to hopefully get the rights to Holy Mackerel, to preserve Holy Mackerel. I don't know if it'll be possible, but it's something I'm going to try to do. I want to make our Signal Knights uh, a staple of the channel. They have already been incredibly successful this year. Our, our Signal Knights have been next level. I want to play more piano on stream for you all. And of course, I want to bring the sickest fits okay you guys know that this year i have i have broken out some absolutely killer outfits okay uh and that's always been the case on my show i've always done some wild outfits on this show and i'm gonna make it to even the next level this coming year and of course i'm hoping hoping that in next year i will be able to remodel the studio to bring us it to bring us visually into the new era as well it's time for a visual change so, wish me some luck on that, because that's probably going to be a lot of work, but I'm looking forward to it. Is it time for the Demon Mama fashion arc? I'm so sorry, I have to pause the music for this. Have you forgotten who you're watching? The fashion arc never started and never ended. The fashion arc was from the beginning of my channel. Have you guys seen... Did you guys, have you forgotten my, my crazy, my outfits? Have you guys forgotten what I did for Hippy Dippy years ago? Where's the photo? There's all the art of it. I got the fan art of it. Where's my actual picture of it? Did you guys forget the craziness of this outfit? Did you guys forget this fit? This was back in fucking 2021. The Harlequin dress. Hold on a second. I have it in my closet. It's literally right over here. The Harlequin dress? It's open right now, but it's not buttoned up. The fucking Harlequin dress? You guys forgotten? My goodness. My goodness. <sighs> I can always tell which of you come from which communities. You silly geese. You silly geese. We were just watching videos from earlier. Did you not see my drip in the previous videos that we watched earlier? My promo with the f flaming red hair? 
Did you guys forget the did you guys forget the hair that I had done? Where's my photos of that? I know I've got it in here somewhere. Where's the pictures of my hair? Wait, look at this one. This is another perfect one. You guys remember the emerald dress? Hold on. You remember this? Remember the emerald dress with the with the purple with the red uh the the white to purple to red hair? Why is this button not working? That's weird. It's true. But my drip has always been good, even this year. I know that I tried, like, I mean, look at, even this is sick as shit. I know that this year I did, uh, I did, I did do a little bit more, um, you guys remember this one? You guys remember this fit? This is at the very beginning of my stream. Damn, that's a nostalgia trip. That's old. Nobody's going to remember that. No one's going to remember that one. Maybe they want me to talk about fashion stuff more often. I totally could. Oh, it's okay. I'm just bullying you a little bit. Don't worry. Don't feel too bad. My golden dress from this year. I've had some good ones this year. I've had some good outfits this year. Seriously. But... To be fair, I did go a little more, I did go a little lower key for most of the year. Um, I guess not that much. I still had all of my, um, I had all my sick, uh, I had all my sick uh, stake hold stuff this year. Though most of those are like uh, classy, gra like tees like this, you know. But I love them and I stand by them. I think they look great. But uh, obviously next year, budget providing. I intend to go pretty hard. Oh yeah, my, my cool ass sweater. I'm glad you got that. It's really sick. Yeah, gold dress with the horns was killer. Obviously I yeah, this is this is what this one. Yeah, the gold dress with the horns. This is the one I just did. I I I, I dressed up in this one for the hippie dippy spectacular, and I have a secret one, okay? I have a I have a I have a secret fit that you all don't even know about yet that's coming soon for a very special stream. And I'm telling you, y'all are gonna love that one. Okay, this one's, I've been holding on to this one. I've had it for a while. I've wanted to, excuse me, my goodness, hiccup. I've wanted to wear it, but I've been saving it for a very particular occasion. So that one will have to wait. Snake cosplay, that would be sick. Anyway, that's all for the year in review of the Demon Mama channel. Please make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you press like and leave me a comment with your favorite Demon Mama moment. Um, I would love to see your favorite Demon Mama moments. Um,